Hello world, this is JWP, J Ward Primo Beats, coming to you live from my bedroom. Check out my website, jwpsite.com, for my social links, latest news and updates, and public offerings. If you'd like to help support what I do, check out my Patreon, JWP Patreon, that's with two Ps, or my GoFundMe, JWP Fund. If you're watching this on YouTube, a like, comment, and subscribe are appreciated. I'm here with Zane from at our density uh, YouTube. What is up? We're about to get lit right now. We're going to do some dev stuff and then we're going to talk about some music industry stuff, our plans as artists. So I'm really freaking hyped. Let's get into it right now. All right. So, so the goal for right now, so JWP, you know, he's a developer, just released Sweet Spots and he has a really good installer for his plugin. So that inspired me to like make my own installer now. So JWP is going to help me and we're going to try to make something good for everybody. So I have some DLLs and some .vst3 files that we need to install to the right spot. And then I also have some fonts that need to get installed all at the same time. So how do we start JWP? <laughs> the software you told me about, NO setup, is that what it's called? Yeah. So you want to start with the wizard. Uh, so we just cancel that, I do believe. I can't, it's a little small for me. I'll see if I can get this full screen for me. I'll just go full screen for you. And then... That should be fine. Oh, there we go. All right. So uh, go to the Inos setup again, and then go to File. File. New. New. And then there's your wizard. So go Next. And then you want to start typing in your stuff here. The vaporwave synth installer is that the good idea name? Would you would you do for yours? Is that right? I believe it's just the application name. So just ask vaporwave synth. Okay, vaporwave synth, easy version one, right? Yep. And then Zane. That's my name. <laughs> and then website, I can just do zane.xyz. Perfect. All right, so that's good, right? Next, you can yep. go next. Okay, and then application destination base folder. What the heck is that? One moment. I'm just bringing up my my monitor. Should have had that up. I always forget about it. So we want allow user to change application folder. Uh, yeah, custom folder. So is this where the plugin's getting installed or something? Yeah. So you're you're just gonna want one to start off with and then we can add more later okay so i was thinking you want to do the dot let's start with the dot dll's whatever <laughs> yeah but okay yeah so i want to save it to steinberg vst so i copied this exact destination copied that and then going back to here let's paste it yeah how does that look right. yeah that's right yeah and then they can change the application folder so that means when they're installing they can choose where yeah Okay, that is perfect. So I'm clicking next. Okay, and allow user to start application after setup is finished. So turn that off. Doesn't this, yeah, this application doesn't have a main executable. And then application files. You, you want to throw everything in there. So add all your files. You just add folder, or you, actually you can do add files. Only the I'm not DLLs or everything, everything. Everything. You sure? Yeah. And then we can uh, fix it up later. If we run into problems, we'll figure it out. So you're good. I didn't know you can drag and drop. That's good. That's handy. <laughs> okay, so next. All right. And then. So this is your start menu. This is what it adds to, right? Okay. So I don't know what start menu means? That's when um, you know your start menu, and then you have you know your list of uh, applications. So for me, it's sweet spots, right? It's in here. Uh, sweet spots here, and then it's just uh, a link to my website. It's the, with the Windows 10 and forward. I think it was Windows 8 and forward. They stopped allowing the installer in the start menu, the uninstaller rather. So you have to use the add remove programs to uninstall programs. Now, just so you know. Mm. Okay. okay. So right. is this looking good for next or? Allow users to disable. You might want to give them that option. Create an internet shortcut in the start menu. That's what you want. And then I guess you can add the create an uninstaller, but I don't think it'll actually build it. So if it's not there, don't be surprised. Um, it's just something Windows 8 and forward. They don't allow the uninstaller in the start menu. 
but you can check it. Okay. Good stuff. All right. Well, let's just go next then. Yeah. All right. Fire. <clears throat> so I don't have any licenses. So it's just the. I don't know if I need to do any of this stuff. You think I do? Usually, usually that's a legal disclaimer. Something I, uh, I'll have to, I forgot to mention to you before starting the stream is that you need these three. You don't need them, but it's nice to have. If you leave them blank, it'll probably disable them, and then you'll just have a direct installer. Yeah, so, I'm just going to leave it blank. I mean, people can jailbreak this stuff. I don't even care, honestly. Like, and the license is just no redistribution. Like mine is kind of uh, really with really legalese. And the second one is uh, information to show before installation. That's usually like the installa installer version. So version one, you know, includes this, that, the other thing. And then if you have like a version two or an update, you know, version two updater contains, you know, the updated version of the program. So it's just a readme. Uh, you can just go ahead and run, run, skip through that. Yeah, for now, I mean, maybe I can adjust the customization one day, but for now, I'm just going to skip that and go next. I just want a really basic installer, just something, click a couple buttons, no worries. Okay, so now we got install mode. So, administration. To be administrative, then, right? Yeah, because it has to go into program files and uh, Windows doesn't allow moving things around in the system files without administrative features. Yeah, like my friend priority. didn't have access to the his like common files or whatever, so he was having a lot of trouble getting Vaporwave synth installed because he couldn't even access his own thing. So <clears throat> that's why we need this administrative mode. We can go next, right? Yeah. Perfect. And then, yeah, just English, right? Yeah. Perfect. And then compiler settings. What the heck? What does so that is that would be your so what was it called? Vaporwave synth installer. So that would be the name. There, that's where you want your name. So, no, on the next one. Next one. Yeah, compiler output base file name. Like that. Yeah, and then we go to browse, and you want to put that the top one. Browse. Don't worry about that one. Browse, and then you want that where your folder currently is. Um, so, like, choose the folder with all the stuff in it, or what? Where it's going to build, where it's going to spit it out. You can throw it right on your desktop. If you want. All right, yeah, that's cool. We'll just put it there. For okay. now. I do want a custom icon file. Can I put a picture really quick? I have yeah. a couple. Uh, no, you can't. They have to be an ICO file. An ICO? Oh, dot ICO? Yeah. So I'm not sure if you use uh there's quick ways yeah I use convert stuff. GIMP, right? And GIMP can save to ISO ICOs. So something to look into that down the road, yeah. I apologize for not save all this stuff though. Yeah. Like can I so I can like re go through this later? What you're doing is things. you're making a script right now. You know how code code is, right? Mm -hmm. So this is just stepping you through and generating the code in the background. And then I can I can walk you through the code because there's a couple things in the code you're going to want to change. And like I said, there's also Inno Studio, so you won't get a wizard again. Um, you'll probably want to get with uh, Inno Studio so it's easier. But for now, we'll just get you set up and we'll get your basic installer happening. Fire. Okay, so we're gonna go next <clears throat> now. Yeah. Perfect. And then Inno setup processor. What is this stuff? Important or not for now? Script wizard. Yeah, just leave it on. Fine. Come I think it just yeah, it just annotates uh, the script. That means just adds little little things to point out what things are. So yeah, go finish, and it'll generate your script. All right. All right. Compile. Uh, you can, I guess so. And then it'll it'll just generate and spit itself out. Do you would like to save? Yes. yes. Yeah. And you want to save that right beside your uh, files. Your installer file. on the desktop no right beside your installer files okay so like yeah right here. there yeah right there and you, you want to just call it a vaporwave then script or something installer script or script fine installer script installer yeah and then it's iss now it's building and then it's going to throw an installer at you after it's done but this is kind of, sort of a bit of an important part because we want to make sure it builds properly, like it could find everything. And 
So is it done? Yeah, it's gonna spit it at you right now. That was way too fast. Oh, well, it's it's, sure it's it be, oh, it's just a, a dot ISS though. It, it should have. Uh, what can we do with this? Well, it's for opening in the, you know. Oh, well, like, okay, okay. That's what you're looking at. So it's like the project file behind everything. It's funny it didn't open it for you. Uh, tab through your stuff, see if you have it running. Because it's supposed to open it. Uh, it don't look like it. Okay, so check your desktop then. That's why I said to build it. Oh, this thing? .exe? Yeah. Open it? Yeah. All right, let's see. Yes, give me that. So it looks legit, but it's installing everything here. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to tinker with it, like I said. So we just cancel. Cancel? Yeah. OK. And then we'll go back to the script. Go back. OK, so the first thing you want to do is if you see at the top left, it says app ID. App ID. It's blue. This thing? Yeah. You want to highlight everything in between the brackets, the curly brackets. Okay. okay. And then go to tools. Tools. Generate GUID. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now highlight it all again in between the brackets and copy that. Okay. And then go to your install location or your where all your resources are. Your dependencies. These yeah. things? Yeah. And then you want to either go above, go up one folder, I think would probably be best. And then right click there and new text file. And then call this Vaporwave Synth GUID. And open that up and yeah, and drop that in there. Paste. Yeah. Control B. And save it. And then save it, control S. Okay. So that's that's your like a light, not really be, be like a license plate for the for the program. You need that code. So if down the road you make an update, your your installer will turn into an updater automatically. So you just kind of rebuild everything. And then because you have that code, it'll look inside the computer and it'll say, okay, there's already a vaporwave synth here. We're going to build on top of that. This is the update. We're going to replace these files. It automatically does most of that stuff. Don't quote me on it, though, but it's supposed to do that. You might have to take, uh, like, down the road, make some update or considerations. But for the most part, I do believe that's what that's for. That's what you need anyway. So keep that. That's sort of something you should put in the cloud as well. You need that as a reference. Got that. I got that on lock now. Super important, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so now... If you see at the bottom here, you have um, all your files there, right? It says files and then it says source. Source. I don't know where the source is at, but I see the files down here. Nope. Up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, these things? Yeah. So there's different sections of your script there. They're highlighted. It says setup, languages, files, icons. Yeah, I see these bold things. All right, so your so desk people to choose where they install the VST3 stuff, you know what I mean? That's what we're getting at now. So if you look at the end of the files, right, you have your DLL, your VST3, and your DLL and your VST3. Of course, we don't know. Okay, you have 64 bit annotations there. So right where it says destination DIR, and then it says uh, quotations app, that's just going to be the folder name. So what you want to do is you want to stick um all those other destinations before app where is this destination stuff that's a dest dir d-e-s-t d-i-r and then it shows a colon and then quotations app oh yeah i see it right here okay so for each one you want to insert the program files location okay so you're gonna cool. yeah you're gonna want to each thing yeah you're gonna want to bounce the directories we'll there start with the vaporwave send files first okay so yeah your top i don't even think you're going to be using your font once because we're going to do something else with those right yeah so we need the dot dll's so i got the destination for the dot dll so no uh, no on the down one because uh you got um, your vst3s you have this two you have two versions you have the 
you have two VST3s and you have two VST2s. So mm -hmm. you have one 64-bit and one 32-bit. So you got to make sure to put them in their appropriate folder. The one that I think you're pretty sure you grabbed from was the 32-bit. So that's your bottom one. The second bottom one, the DLL, right? That's your 32-bit. Yeah. yeah. So I got the DLLs right now. So let's do those ones. So this thing right here. Yeah. So put it. No, not don't replace it. Put it before. Put it before the app. B before the bracket, inside the the quotation. Okay. Yeah. Bam. So like that. Yeah, and then you got to put the backslash in. Backslash. Like that. Yeah. And then the app. Okay. That'll just make a folder after whatever your app is. So it's going to be in a folder called, uh, it's called Vaporwave Synth. Okay. So you just got to keep doing that. So we'll paste it before this other DLL then? No, that you want to... They both save in the same folder. Both the DLLs are in the same folder. They're not supposed to be, but whatever. <laughs> The uh, yeah, that's how it is. The 32 bits supposed to be in should work 86, but whatever. And nobody's gonna, okay. nobody's um, gonna go looking for it. Maybe they will, Bob, yeah, whatever. Okay, so <laughs> okay, so now hold up, this is where it doesn't get controversial, but like, so I just highlighted x86. So let me go into the x86 folder real fast just so I can see what version saves where so x86 and then common files vst3 so it just saves the basic vaporwave synth with no x86 so it would be this one right here at the bottom is this destination yeah and then don't forget your backslash this one oh yeah, yeah i'll do that right now oh shit, sorry and then this one goes right here and then we put backslashes on all of them right now here here let me check the chat right quick i don't think anybody's come to we lost um band lab so i don't know what happened there rip band lab yeah all right so we got all four destinations set up things are looking solid I really feel like you should put x86 in front of the DLL version to 32 bits. Because people that people that are looking for it, they're going to be looking for it there. Just copy it. Oh, wait, what folder would it be, though? And like, I want to open it right now. So it's x86 and then Steinberg or what? For you, it's Steinberg, yeah. Because that's what you prefer. And that's where it would be. The that's where people do you think should be here? The 32 bit DLL. Which is program files is eighty six. This one, right? The yeah, x eighty six. DLL. Yeah. Oh, the x eighty six. Okay, so I'm assuming it's this one, right? Yeah. You just gotta put in the brackets x eighty six after program files. All right, I trust you on this because I know you're not. You need a space. Otherwise, it's gonna create a brand new folder called program files. Yeah, there you go. That's where people generally look for it. It's a VST2. Not a lot of people use them, but the people that do are going to want. All right. So now we're perfectly set up on the destinations. No, we still have to sort of neuter your original destination. Otherwise, everything is going to kind of bounce around. So go back, go up to the top, go left, and then up. Actually, I don't think there is an up. Uh, yeah, there's something up. Okay, so you see where it says uh, default directory inside. Pretty sure you just want to clear that. Where? Sorry, it glitched. Default dir name or dir. This is name. It says C program files. After what? It's uh. Oh, this thing right here. Yeah, you want to clear the other. Which part? The the first part, because otherwise everything will kind of get thrown in there all this right there yeah that's it so yeah. hopefully it's ready um you do have to do a test specimen so i'm not sure how you're gonna do this it? no so it was save could hit control s and then we'll get our in progress saved we want to test and make sure things are going to the right place right so mm -hmm. we don't want to clutter up your computer too much 
we're going to want to edit our destinations. Um, I'm not even sure where those fonts are going to go. You could probably just pull those right out if you want for now. Mm. Delete them. Um, hmm. uh, I'm just trying to Should we check online real quick? Well, about the fonts or because I feel like or should we do a test version see if the VSTs are working? Well, open a notepad and just throw those fonts in there. We'll bring them back later. But yeah, we should do a te destination test first. All right. So just delete this or copy it and then cut it and then open a notepad and just toss it in there and save it on desktop or whatever. So you have it for reference. All right, I'll do that. And just call it like fonts or whatever. Then we can okay. come back to that. All right. So, so where do you want to change your destinations to? Like, I'm just trying to think. Program foils. Like, put an O instead of I. <laughs> what destinations? Like with the, all four destinations, we want to make sure that it's executing properly because when we ripped out the default location, it, it, it kind of mess things up, but we want these things to go to different places, right? So we want to, we want to test and make sure. Uh, so program files, change the I to O, and then you'll have four, you'll have two folders called program foils. And then you'll know okay. for sure. Oh, over here on the right side? Yeah. All right. So we're changing this name just to make sure that it's installing in the right spot, basically. Yeah, we're testing the destinations. Okay, and then hit save, and then you can push the play button. Play button. Mm. App Still. ID. Two consecutive. I think it's the uh, curly bracket at the end. You got to get rid of one, I think. And then probably at the beginning, too. I think it only requires one current set of curly There you go. There we go. Okay, so it's compressing this down. We can see it happening at the bottom. I'm really excited to get this working. So okay. we also should change your destination for your outputs. But I mean, it's, it'll be on your desktop. You can access your desktop from right there. Right? Oh, there's running. OK, so I don't know what's going on there. We'll see how is it goes. Is this the whole download for Vaporwave Synth, or is this just the installer? This is the installer. Or the installer for the installer or the installer for Vaporwave Synth? This is the installer for Vaporwave Synth. OK, so it already looks wrong, I feel like, then, right? Mm-hmm. Is saving to desktop. How did you, so for sweet spots, how does sweet spots work with the installer? Like you, you click next and then it lets you choose what to download. Well, sweet spots all goes to one deck directory, right? One folder. Yeah. And then I made subfolders. So keep that. It'll throw it on your desktop. If you want, you can do, well, I already create a folder called sweet spots since, however, it, um, it's likely going to override that. We'll figure out how to override that. Second, so it should override that. You just click install. Yeah, and then you should get program foils. So, um, yeah, it's 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 record. file name, directory name, or volume label syntax. Probably because the name is weird. Maybe we can just put program files and just see what happens. Oh shit! I click cancel and now everything's ruined. Okay. Check your check your directories. Make sure you don't have program foils. I don't think it worked. No, you don't. It didn't work. It's because the directories are too like important. You know what I mean? I can mm. delete Vaporwave Synth and then I oh, won't let me delete anymore. What the flip? Delete. The heck, it's not working. I think you have another window open. I have two. Something sitting on top of it. Uh, I don't see. Let me close this on. Should be editable. Flip. Let me try one more time. Huh. Let me reopen this thing right now. Trust me. Okay, so I think we're gonna have to do it the hard way. <laughs> the hard way. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't realize you'd be creating so many destinations. I have an idea. I can delete Vaporwave Synth from all the locations, then you want to see what happens. Actually, before you did, I wonder if it finished. Do you think it finished? I don't think it finished, right? It didn't even work. I couldn't, I couldn't get okay. it because of the program files thing. I'm just going to delete it from every spot real quick. What does mine do? I'm going to see what mine does. Wave synth. What does mine say? I'm not sure it even prompts me for it. Well, yeah, because it is a location. And like I said, it's all. I only, I only offer VST3 64 bits. Hmm. But it, it doesn't prompt me for a location. All right, so I think I'm gonna try it again now that I deleted everything and we got the right names. Are you cool with that? All right, hold on, but uh, I'm pretty sure you want to open with you know, compiler. You want to make it so they can't change the destination icons, full output directory. I kind of like that feature though, like, cause like that's what I kind of care about when I'm using installers. Like, but it should prompt the installer. It should prompt you for the right spot. Every one though, that's the problem. Is it has going to have to prompt you for every one? Like uh, FL Studio, when you install FL Studio, it asks you where do you want FL Studio to go? Where do you want your VSTs to go? So we're going to have to figure out multiple destinations. So you can go ahead and attempt to build like that. Oh yeah, let me delete these things again. Okay, let's see. So click play, starting up again. Okay, so I'm gonna look let's it see up. What happens? Mm, you know, multiple files to multiple. Let's so yeah, it's all saving to the desktop currently. Let me do next again. Install. So there's something at the end. Wait, before closing that, it said something at the end. It's trying to make a file. Trying to create the file in the destination. Setup was unable to create the directory. There's a C at the end. Mm -hmm. I'll delete the last. The last um, close bracket. I'm Maybe. Like this. I don't think so. Maybe not, but uh, let's see. Probably not. Default directory, my app name. Yeah, yeah, no, but still not working. See, um, it says VST plugins, and then there's like a C at the end. So, like I said, it, it's trying to install a default directory. Yikes. Even 64. Prompt for an additional folder for data, and I'll set up with three destination. Okay, so select destinations. Taking the L right now. The what? We're taking the L. What's what's the L? Taking a loss right now because we can't figure this out. Now we got it though. We got it. Okay. So it looks like we have a, a side script. Yeah, there. when I was looking online, it said we had to like copy paste some script stuff. Okay, so close this file close if you can. I'll close like a new file or like just close out of, you know. Nah, I guess you can go new file. I mean, you should be able to close things though. I don't know why it doesn't let you close. Okay, so next. New empty script? Uh, I'm not sure. No, cancel. So we're starting back from base? 
No, cancel. we're going to look at an example. Maybe there's some an example. Yeah, cancel. Yeah, and then file open. And then, okay, cancel. <laughs> close, it, close it all down and then reopen it because it's supposed to give you a prompt that will show you where your... Um, there it is. Okay, so more files or example scripts. My, my bad. Shit. No, I think it's gone. Now you got to close it. Okay. All right, so example scripts. Yeah. And then let's see. See, I used components, right? Open that? No, that's the one I use. It's different from you. Still. What does that say? 64 bit 3 arch? Yeah, 3 arch, 2 arch. Try 3 arch. Well, 2 arch. 64 bit 2 arch. Let's see what it is. Source. Almost celebrate. Run it. Seems, seems legit. Play? Yeah. Let's see what it does. Contains it. <laughs> nice job. Should I disable my Windows or is this an actual virus? It's not a virus. It's just probably something that says stuff over and over again Look how trash windows is the fucking program doesn't even open up it's so white i did that to me too yeah uh windows 11 is awesome okay are you so, me? set up my app that's what's gonna be my program pf directories i can't even yeah, the Windows security doesn't even work, bro. This is so trash. So I think you're going to have to go get this. It's too bad they don't just share an ISS file. All right, so it looks like I'm going to have to build... You're taking hands now. Look at Script Studio here. Maybe Script Studio can help us. All right, simple script. Um, use Script Wizard to create project. Okay, so that's the same stuff. Is it a change? Custom, it's a custom directory. This application doesn't need a folder. <laughs> okay, so that's thing and then say if we have four files so this is just we'll just save this first oh can't i need to add files from we'll go right to the desktop here my wonderfully messy desktop and we'll call this installer and then we'll make three four files three files two files Four and this is VST three uh, sixty four bit brackets I guess and then this is VST. I don't know why you still offer all. I don't know why you offer all these options. Like, why? It's because like I genuinely believe it or not, I know a few people who only use VST two because they have old computers. I know it's weird, but like. Just in case, I mean, why not? It's available, it exports it, so, like, why not? Directory, this is here. I only use VST3 when it's available, but... I just let everything, I just dump everything to the folder and get to doing it. So, uh, finished, okay, would you like to compile? Yes. Would you like to save the script? Yes. This is right there, this is tester. Okay, so what happens? Where does it go? I don't know why it doesn't want to build. Mm. Should have ran it. I don't know why I didn't run it. All right, let's see. It just goes straight. <laughs> I don't even know it did anything. Instant. Where did it go? Instant installation. Yeah. It 
it just says win. It went to the win. Where is win? What is win? Wow. Okay, so work. Now I gotta go remove it because yeah. I don't know where it went. And it'll just be no, it's not even there. My program. It's called my program. I should have actually looked up Google No. This can it doesn't show me where the folder is. Uh, more sold on source. Location. And it doesn't even have a location. I don't know what it does. It's just some random beat thing. Okay. So let us try this giant script here. So I need three. So set up all this noise. Then let's replace this, I think. Then Pascal code. Is it just part of this thing? program is actually difficult. Oh yeah, it's a headache. Took me all day just to write um, mine. Then it took me another day just to write the press release. Okay, so we have file one, two, three. It's not going to change. File one, two, three. File one. Is that it? File one. Dot text. Okay. For some reason, it feels just the font's different, I guess. And two and three. I'm delete that. You can even, which I don't really want to get into, is make it so I got to delete this. Make it so that you can remove parts. Let's not worry about that. What is this? One? Where am I? One, two, three. Okay, so the dream installer would just be like a checklist, and they can just like tick off like, oh, I want VST three only. They can just click toggle that, and then install that in the right spot. I don't know. Okay, so I'll run this. I don't know how well this is gonna work. It's probably not gonna be happy. Let's see. It doesn't care. There's so much stuff missing. It's like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Here's, here's your problem. Here's your files. So there you go. Boom, boom, boom. That looks right. Mm -hmm. Hard coded path. The hard coded path. Okay, so yeah. See hard code paths, really my cute. documents, and app that a local. I don't want that. I want let's go hard coded path one, two, and three. It's like a, a war move. For why is there three different spots open? Is that for the different files you chose? Yeah, because I have three files, file one, two, and three. So now it's going to make three different folders on my C drive, and they're going to be called hard path. <laughs> hard path one, mm -hmm. two. Okay, so let's see. let's see. Hard path? Hard path one, file one. Hard path two, file two. Hard oh, path three. it's working. File three. Yes. Then we'll pull, I got to now uninstall them because I don't want hard paths in my computer. <laughs> I like easy paths. Mm -hmm. Yes. Bye bye. Done. Okay. So in order to reroute this or redo it for you, looks like someone's talking or something. Oh my gosh, bro. I have a lighter in my hand. I just burned something. Okay. What? Um, it's still turning on band lab. Anyway, my my dead video. Okay, so you require this part of the script. And then you kind of, uh, this looks fine. It's just default directory name is PF. That's the variable. And then it puts the variable where? 
Stat, it looks like it's cycling. Prompt one, two, three. So, yeah. We're going to have to wiggle things around a bit. How do you want to do this? I don't even know what you need to. Uh, I don't know. Like, I can do what you just did, or you can send me the file. I don't know how you made the triple installer thing right now. That I just look like a good. I just jacked the file from the, from the net. The net was like, yes, here you go. Uh, so we'll go new project, new script. No, I want. Close this. Can I close this? File, close. Go for new. Because I need some components. Wizard. And we'll just breeze through this. Next, finish. Should I compile? No. Okay, so I need all this wonderful stuff here, too. And then they're up here. Okay, so they're variables up here. And then come down here. Okay, so I'll send you this chunk. What's different here? This default directory, pref slash my pro. So that's what's different. Pf. Okay, so that's already there, my app name. That's what was broken on yours, was that we were missing this pf thing. We just totally ripped it out. Um, but like I said, you, you have more than one destination, so it wouldn't have been that easy anyway. We still need this giant code. Okay, so this is vapor synth, V A P O R. Paper wave synth. Paper wave synth. Is there is <laughs> is it separate words? Is it one word? Is there a capital? Space W. Okay, so one word, paper wave synth, another word. <clears throat> there we go. Version one. Company is just Zane. Yeah. So, all caps. Okay, all caps Z A N Y E. Z A Y N E. Z A Y N E. <laughs> I'm I'm working with two of with two brains right now, bro. Trying to here. I'm trying to do input, and this is just uh, Z A Y N E at X Y Z. Yeah, yeah. Z A Y N E dot X Y Z. Perfect. Z. Okay, and then define app executable. So this is be vaporwave installer. I'm sure. Can you look at yours, your script, real right um, quick? I want to make sure that that's. Yeah, we can just do vaporwave synth installer. Or I'm, I'll open it. Okay, and then what does it say for up top here? Um, it doesn't even look like you have that. Yeah, I don't know. my app exe yeah. name. Oh, because there isn't one, right? Okay, so my app exe name that doesn't get referenced anywhere. Let's look at this one. My app exe you name. Vaporwave synth. It seems like. Yeah, I gotta look at yours a little bit. Um, actually, it should be here. Everything should be here. My exe name. Okay, so I gotta make a different script here. So let's trash this file. Close scripts, no, because I need a reference. I need that because it's sort of an exact reference. Let's go new script wizard, and then next, and then that's fine. Allow user to change. Yes, this is what we don't want. Absolutely. Okay, then this will give us a better example here. We'll put directory. This will be right there. So that's going to have to change for you. Okay, no. See, it's gone now, right? Mm. Okay, so this goes. Oops. Then, so all this wonderful stuff, you're going to have to reinsert your UI ID. And then, app version 1.5, app name. Okay, so these variables have to be transferred. So, this is app name, my app name, app version. So be my app version. And then default directory, leave that alone because that's um we want things we still have to do fonts too. All right. Destination directory, get code directory, get 
directory message file just English that's fine okay so we're going to I'm gonna to have to sort of paraphrase your um, files so you're gonna to have to read me the names of your files you want me to like send it to you or something can you do that dude I don't know. Oh, yeah, I guess you could do that in the text or in the chat box. So what do we need? What do you need? Like the exact file names. Source things? The source things or what? Yeah. My screen? I don't need the locations. The I just... Line? No, I just need the exact file names. Yeah. Just that. I guess even, Each one. even one of them is fine. I can just dissect from there. Mm. Okay. Because they just have to be exact, right? And then I'm sure that's the name's changes. It's just pulling the 64 bit and then adding BST3. Okay, yeah, so they're pretty much all the same. That's fine there. Mm -hmm. This, okay. boom. And of course, we want four files. Boom. Boom. If you want to send me anything, send me the destination directories. And then we'll. Destination directories. Yeah. Good deal. Or, yeah. oops, home, shift home, delete this giant space here, get directory three, and then this is what, 64, BSD three, three, and then this is as well, BSD three, and then these 64s get pulled. Is there a space there? I don't think there is, eh? So many windows open. <laughs> okay, there it is. No, that's not. There it is. Three. No, there isn't a space. Okay. So get rid of that space. And then I gotta multiply these prompts here. So we want a four. Oops. Get our page prompt four. Caption description sub caption false and directory. Do this again. Number four here. Then value string three directory four. Expand constant local app data. Okay, so these are our destinations here. I'll come back around to that. Okay, I'm not sure if this is going to be visible. I'll leave it as is for now. We have directory this, whatever that is. We're going to copy it again. And we're going to make that destination three, directory four. Okay, and I do believe the paths go there. Let's go this. So this is. Steinberger uh, here, I believe. Then I'll fix them if I need to after. Okay, quotations. Oops, I think I copied. I did copy. Okay. More Steinberger. And finally, that and these will be the default, and the user can change them if they so feel fit to. Directory four, everything else looks okay. Prompt four, prompt four, directory values one to three, one to three, one to three. Okay, so are these right? The right order is what I mean. So DLL, BST, DLL, BST. Everything looks fine. I don't know about these prompt one to four though. We're gonna run it. Yeah. If they're visible, they're visible. I'm gonna save. Let's see. Let's see. This is test this. So we'll call this actually. I actually don't even have your file. <laughs> I'll have to make dummies. Um this is test two. Okay, so let's make some dummies here. Mm -hmm. The, the 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 fake <laughs> the fake uh fake dll yeah the fake zane synth huh. 
<laughs> Actually, I think there's a space here. I'm not sure if there's... No, there's no space there. Check. It just looks like there's... Okay. Then we make some fake files here. Motorbike. They're counterfeit, bro. <laughs> Counterf <laughs> counterfeiting Zeno here. I'm suing. <laughs> Paste that again, and then finally. So it should just see them right beside each other. I don't really think it needs the whole directory. That's generally how I understand. Okay, so it looks like everything is ready to roll. We are missing some variables up top here. What are we missing? We're missing here. Default, default group. Okay, yeah, missing stuff. Okay, output file base name, we'll call this. Okay, so this isn't what I thought it was. No, that's fine. That's right. So this is be brackets. It doesn't look like it needs to be brackets. This would be vaporwave. Vaporwave. I think that needs brackets. Installer. Imagine it does. It doesn't say it though, it doesn't show it, so I'm not gonna. Let's try a new one. Here. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're doing. I'm just, <laughs> just trust. Okay, so I'll put folder, whatever. This doesn't have an executable. Yeah, okay, so no, no, that this. This would be the the installer. I just need to see if it's in brackets because there's spaces on it. So we're gonna make a new script and finish. Do not run. No, it's not in brackets. Interesting. So it's ready to go then. Pretty much Default directory. App support URL. App updates you. Publisher URL, publisher outputs, default group. Okay, so I want all of this. Let's just grab it all, and then we'll figure it out later. Figure it out what's inside here. Okay, app ID, we can put that on top. I don't like the way this cursor jumps to just anywhere. App name is already there. App version is already there. App version name doesn't do anything. Publisher. Okay. App support. App version directory group output base. Synth compression. Okay. So we've kind of Frankenstein stuff together here. I mean, not really. It's just that this test or the script we appropriated from the internet didn't have any of those values so let's go ahead and save that and hopefully it compiles compiles no default directory any name already says yeah okay so that was my oversight my bad should have caught that fine save go so this is the new setup for vaporwave yeah this is the complete guy okay so we still have a, that's a default now we have a default but we still have what Why do we still get that one? I know, but we're not supposed to. It's not supposed to give us that. So there's two pop-up layers, or what? Yeah. Um. So let's redo a little new blank. And we're going to redo. I just need a reference here. These are pretty much... For this, I didn't realize how much <laughs> it was going to be. This, is, work. this isn't too bad. Compared to using components, components was a major pain because I had to fill in. This is a different. That's what I use. This? No, com yeah, well, it's sort of like mine. Like you said, you'd have a checkbox for it, right? Um, that's what I had was a checkbox. 
my installer has components so you can install just what you want. As I've in the past, oh. people have complained that I don't want the whole package if I don't pay for, you know, certain things. So people who just want, for example, um, you know, just the band pack, you mind has just the band pack, you turn yeah, off like completely. I wanted something like that. Is that hard to do? Well, it is because you have custom directories too. So it's either either. And if you, you can't choose this because then it'll dump everything all in one folder. The FL Studio is like that too. It doesn't give you the option to have, you know, only VST2 or only VST3 plugins. They don't offer them, but um, in the event that they did. So I don't think it would work for you in your case. Maybe down the road, if you have like something with extensions or, you know, other parts, that would be something we could look into. But for now, you you want to offer, yeah, you want to offer just the destinations. Okay. Would you like to save the script? Uh, no. It's not like, oh, yeah. Okay, so what if I just say, okay, but what, do I, what am I doing again? Trying to determine why I have another director. Okay, so let's leave these blank and let's see what it does. I'm not sure it's going to be very happy. Shooting right now. Well, we're, we're Frankensteining. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, source is empty. Um, I guess I could just rob from here. Right? Oh, but then there's four. There only needs to be three. Okay. So now there's files for it to grab at. Okay, because it's not saved anyway. So save, yes. So it doesn't know where it is. It's like, what are you talking about? Okay, so we'll call this Apple. And save. Okay, now it can see the files because it's it, it exists somewhere. No, it still gives you that, eh? It's interesting. It's like, here's a, you know, where do you want to put your files? Oh, really? Well, what about these ones? <laughs> I don't even know why it gives you that option. So there's no way to pull that down. That's just the way it is. I apologize that Inno doesn't offer that. I don't know why it doesn't offer that. Hmm. There has to be. Well, it says do not specify default folder, right? So let's try that. New script wizard. Okay, now we're making another version of this app. Allow applications. The application doesn't need a folder. And then it just what? doesn't need a folder. What does it do then? It was like that weird thing before. Compiler output directory. So set up no location. Okay, I don't know why I did that. I can't find set up a location. Okay, so what does it do now? What does the script say? No, I don't want to compile. So the script says output directory set up no location. Set up no location. Right. Base file name. Set up no location. Okay, base file name. So in our major app here, default directory. Is that where it stuck the output directory? So where's default directory? That's not a thing. Output directory. Output dir. Okay, so we're gonna say that. Set up no location. When I built it, did it? What did it do again? I can't even remember. I don't think hmm. we built it yet. It's just like install air. Yeah, it's just like here, have some air. <laughs> I'm not going to really install anything, but there you go. Was... Okay, so we'll run this and we'll see if that does anything. Let's see if it knocks off that right. first page. We're going in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. No, it's still there. Nope. Mm. Okay, so cancel. I think it's because this one doesn't actually have a default directory. I don't know if it likes that, though. Create app directory. Okay, that's what's missing. Create app directory. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. I hope. 
So hopefully it'll override that and still give us the decay. Okay, there we go. Bam, right there. Oh, we got it. So we have sub caption and prompt, prompt, prompt. Okay, so these prompts need to change. So we have caption and description. So our caption would say, where do you want to install your different versions? Description. These are the locations for different VST locations. Say that they're all default too. Okay, so. Looks legit as fuck. And then. You're still missing. This is perfect. Sort of. But there's no introduction. I didn't notice. But the introduction would have been those other files, right? You got to make your text files, your license, and your introduction. Yeah. Okay, so. This is prompt one, prompt two. We want caption, which is on top. Would be. Uh, what do you want to put for these? We can do what you. I like what you were saying, like where to install. I forgot how it looked on the freaking thing. But VST like, directories, and then description. Choose the locations for the different file types. Spelled different wrong. Yeah, I know. I got it. It doesn't have a spell correct one. D I F F E R E N T. Yeah. Different. And then sub caption. And then, I'm not even sure what else to put. BST directory. XD. RAR oh. XD. No. Put <laughs> 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 <The> pwned. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder if I just leave it blank if it'll just go away. Okay, so this first one is BST. Two. This is 64 bits. Yes, 64 bits. And then I'm just going to copy this, string it along, and then I'll just change the numbers. This last two was 32, and of course, I believe this is the second one. That's PST3. Okay, we'll give it a run, and we'll see what it looks like. So save. Yes. I like the progress we're making. Yeah, well, we're getting some roughly. Okay, so it does go away. It just disappears. Is that fine? VST directories. Choose the locations for the different file types. And then we have VST2, 64 bit, which goes there. VST3, 64 bit, which goes there. VST2, 64 bit, which goes there. there. And if we hit browse, then it'll bring up the browser. Perfect. Yeah, and that, that's perfect. And then I'd be like, no, bro, it's not supposed to go there, bro. <laughs> it wants to go in common files. Common files VST2. Bro. There we go. Right? And then they, they, they can choose. To... All right. But, but does it work? Does it work is the question. So I'm going to change these. Um, you could just say like, yeah, it's fine. And, and then put it out and suddenly something's missing. Right? So we're going to test. I'm going to distribute my uh, counterfeit file. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The leak, illegal leak. Yeah. Oh, that's the wrong folder. That has to be 86. Right? I don't know, right? Yeah, 86. The leak, yeah. the fake leak. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just super fast. Well, it is just text files okay. with nothing in them, right? Okay, so let's look at my common files. C program files. I got so much clutter. Yeah, my in H two drive or M dot two drive crashed. No, I didn't crash to corrupt. I, I I was moving into it. I was put Windows Professional on it, and then I had both of them running at the same time, and it didn't like them. Damn. So it's going to take me a little while to recover. At least all this junk will be out of the way. There it is. Vaporwave since sixty four bit. That is the DLL. So common files three. I better delete those. Like I said, just uninstall it. They play since 64 bit VST3. Yeah, FL Studio probably wouldn't yeah, like that. Thought. So far, I still got two more checks here to do. But I always do the checks, man. Checks. No, that's just a. Oh. Okay, checks. Vaporwave synth regular. Or rather, 32 bits. And Vaporwave synth 32 bit VST3. Zero kilobytes. Something's fishy there. Mm. <laughs> Something's fishy. Okay, so the add remove. 
and then programs features and let's see if it put a link in the thing so it should be in here too as well right i made a group Luxango. no it's not in there hmm i'm supposed to make a group so we gotta look at that i suppose well probably because there was no website added is it under like zane Hmm. Okay, so we'll get it out of the system and then we're going to touch on that. We'll get that, uh, inst that link sort of thing. Publisher, capital Zane. Version 1. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, did it actually pull everything out? From everywhere. We'll just do a spot check here. Yo, you have the script saved though, like just in case anything crashes. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. And then common files, spot check on three. It's gone. So that's enough of a check. Well, right, well it's working pretty much. Except you're not getting your group name menu, default group name. Create app directory. So what's different now? <laughs> Constantly poking at this thing and creating new what scripts. What is it doing now? It's not putting uh, your application website URL link in the start menu. Um, so that's a no. That doesn't really matter. In fact, application doesn't need a folder. Nope. That's not that. Is it not that? What happened to the start menu? Is it a different wizard, I wonder? I was using start the application. Show. Hmm. Nice. Well, let's see what the internet says. Because mine does. I'm sure it does, right? Well, let's see what mine says. Okay, so let's go here. Open that in a new window so we can hold on to that location. Installer, and then my giant. Yes, file. You know. Okay, so default directory name, default group name, app, my app name, license file, install for output base, set up icon. Weird. There's nothing much else. Icons. There we go. That's what we're missing. I don't know why that one's okay. That's just my version. I was wondering like, why is it black? Um. Okay. Is it before or after languages? Does it matter? No. After languages. After languages, before code. Okay, program on the web. My mm -hmm. app URL, group on installer. So this doesn't work. I'm just going to pull that because, yeah, it just doesn't work. There, now it will likely give you the Zane on the web, your website in the start list. Usually that's also for like a help file. Right? Do you want that? Probably. Okay, so we'll leave it in. It's a good idea. It's there. It's done. Leave it in. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so sweet spots. This is what it looks like. Sweet spots on the web. So program on the web. Why does it? I don't know if I can change the caption for that. So it just opens up to your website? Yeah, yeah. See, this one's spaced out, sweet spots on the web, but this one is all condensed program on the web. So I don't think there's any way to change that. My app name. So it's just going to have to be like that, I guess. Group slash program on the web. Yeah, so it's just going to have to be that. Word. 
So now we got to look at fonts wonderfully. So let's go grab some goofy fonts and then yeah, I'm going to install some goofy fonts, I guess. The goofy, goofy fonts. Goofy fonts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pajamas. Super goofy. Yeah. Quite literally goofy himself in person. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lifesavers, whatever. Let's go with the first one. Books, pajamas. Just a, it's got to be one that I don't have, right? So I gotta help a still skin. Mm -hmm. I mean, this shouldn't be such a decision. It's not like I'm gonna use it. Oh, you're the, you're making the decision. I know. Personal use free, hundred percent free. There we go, Brewski. Okay, so yeah, well, it's hundred percent free, so it's not like I'm gonna be redistributing or anything. So mm. look at that; it says set up no location. There. Why does it say that? Weird. Oh, because that's just that's just what it dumped. The installer itself had dumped it there. I don't know why? Okay. I could, I could probably get you pinned because you're not. Get you pinned. Should I uh, turn the stream off? Or my stream off for now. I mean, if you want, I guess so. Yeah. Got it. For now, yeah. Then there you go. There, actually, we'll put you down here in this corner, sort of the opposite of me, so kind of a bit out of the way, more out of the way. Just hopefully, I don't need that corner, right? Then pin, remove from top. Okay, so you're pinned. And now I have a font, installer font, brewski, brewski font, and then we're just going to extract here. Just dumps it there. Info text, Creative Commons, Brewski Fonts, that font space. Okay, so now we gotta look at how to install fonts. I saw online there's some scripting stuff, but I don't know how to do it. And I don't know. Okay. It seems kind of, there wasn't a lot I could find. Maybe you, maybe you're good at this. Then we'll go here. I really wanna close these, but I'll leave them open for now. File source. Insert that there like that. And then this is Brewski, right? I'm just going to grab the complete file name here. Uh oh. What does F3 do? I accidentally hit F3. I don't know what it does. Okay. The, direction, the destination directory font. Font install. Okay. So I think that has to be the exact name, right? The sort of Viewer this has to be this exactly. So it's Brewski. Mm. Brewski like that. And it's done. That's it. I can build it and then we'll determine if I have Yeah, that's it's what it says. Because it's it's throwing yeah, itself I into actually installed Brewski yet. You're gonna try mm. and install it right now. Yeah. So we're installing the Fugazi. The uh, vaporwave since now. So there's a start menu thing. Something right there. I knew something was missing. Okay, finish. Now we go to fonts. Font settings. Do I have one called Brewski? Indeed, I do. Oh, uh, no flipping way. Okay, so then what happens if I uninstall it? Dun, dun, dun. Does it go away or is it consistently just going to stay with the system? That was easy. I could have done fonts for my for my sweet spots. I could have had a custom font for that. I was thinking champagne. Mm. But uh Ooh. no, I don't know. Champagne is one of those ones you gotta buy anyway. But uh is it there? Brewski. It is still there, so it's consistent. I mean, end users would probably be happy to have a new font, so whatever. Most people usually are. It's like, oh, a new font. <laughs> I'm going to so, print a banner on my expensive just, printer. 
So this was my goal right now, JWP. So it looks like we have a lot of it set up. I kind of want to, I want to get the official installer like a hundred percent, and then I want to send it to you and see if it works when you load the plugin. That's kind of my goal. Okay, we're we're really riding on the time. I'll do another hour, which is fine. Right. I'd I'd like to get to bed early. Is it tomorrow's Monday and the week restarts? So let's get on it. I require your font names. So you're going to have to throw those into the chat and then go look at your icon because you said you want it all official, right? So you're going to want your icon. And if, if you want your, your license, ICO. Okay. You have that ready? Yeah. Let me send you some stuff right now. So I just need file names. Here's the dot ICO. If, Cause I wanted to have an icon for the, for the installer. I don't know if that'll work. It, and did the, you the fonts? Did you see my installer icon? Took me a few minutes to throw uh, together. Bam! <laughs> oh, and it turned out okay. Turned out decent. Nice. When it gets too small, it does kind of like get chunky, but at least it's distinguishable, right? Mm -hmm. So, are you sending me a whole ass file or something? Well, you did send me a whole. I sent the. Oh. Okay. Ico file, and then I'm sending the font names. Not sure I really needed the file, but now that I have it, it's fine. Okay, so I need now. I need a new script with the custom icon. Right? Let's look at that. So custom icon. That one there. Build this. Okay, so here we go right here. Set up icon file. Just install that. We'll put it for compression. Is that where it is here? Yeah. And then we'll get rid of all this stuff for it. Yeah. Hopefully that works. I guess I could test it, eh? Test it. Baby steps, right? Mm. I'm just, uh... Okay, so, so you're gonna, like, send oh, me this file? It even change, It even changes the picture up here. Oh, this is fucking sick! <laughs> That's interesting. Mm. Okay, so, no setup location. Okay, I don't know where it went, though. Maybe it just has to refresh. That's another thing about the icon file is that it doesn't refresh. So like as when the end user gets it, it'll be like it'll look like that for them. But because there's already sort of like a thumbnail, it doesn't show. I probably have to delete. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, should I send you the font files right now in the VST threes or am I gonna do that? And then send you the final. What do you want to do? I mean, I wanted to send, like, I wanted to do it kind of on my computer, but I can just, whatever's easier. I don't know what's easiest. I can send you everything right now real quick. It'd probably be easier that way, just so it's a, it's a complete package when you get it sort of thing. All right. So here's the fonts, and then I'll send you the, the BLLs and shit. Okay. You curse on your stream? Or I mean, I'm not supposed to. But I, I, okay, I, do, I do my best not to, but I mean... We're human, right? Can it yeah, be no, restricted? Like, and it and I it's lived up, no. And it's mostly like conversational. So as long as you're not like spouting profanities steadily, it's fine. Yeah, I got you. Like super sailor. <laughs> okay, all the files are sending right now. I'm just really I'm very thankful for you because like seriously, there's no way I would have done this on my own. Like it would have taken you a while. It took me like I think a month just to grasp ISS as well. Wow. And I don't I don't even know the Delphi code, so yeah. Delphi code. It's absolutely dangerous, that's fine. Just be kinda we borrowed, we appropriated someone else's code. Who know Delphi? I don't know Delphi. Mm -hmm. I don't want to learn Delphi. I'm I want to learn C. Yep. We'll get into that soon. 
I plug soon. I actually have to learn solidity first. Solidity. Solidity, yeah. And then I'll move into C++ because solidity is easier. Time is a pretty generic language. Well, not generic, but it's, it's. I imagine it's probably simple. We can get rid of these the Gazy files here. I'm gonna transparent you. <laughs> Where'd I go? Had to fade you, bro. Um, okay, so I could straight up delete. But why are they? How is it that? Oh, because you have underscores in your names. I was wondering. I rename it. Yeah, I was wondering how they both. I wonder. I was wondering how. It was possible. You download it off Discord. It puts underscores. Okay. So do you want underscores or no underscores? No, no. I don't want any. Okay. So let's go ahead and just get rid of those underscores. We'll put that transparent for a second. <laughs> dude is a quality streamer. <laughs> I want you to pop off on the stream. You deserve it, dude. What do you mean? For real. Like, I, I wish you had like a million stream viewers right now. It's fine. A lot of people aren't into computer programming. So, I mean, it's no big deal. I was thinking, though, I didn't realize it. I'm going to leave this icon statue with its spaces. Nobody's going to see that. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Um, I was looking at my system requirement, the system requirements for what's it called Starfield. I don't know if you know what Starfield is. Is that a VST? It's a video game. Oh, no. You know what Skyrim is? I heard of it, seen a little bit of gameplay. So it's like Skyrim in space. Oh. So, yeah. I I didn't think I met the qualifications, but apparently my computer does. It just barely does. So I'm considering... Laptop for PC. Laptop. I'm considering if I should, you know, do a gamer run. But, but man, I, I lived in Skyrim for like two years, like nonstop. I'd go over to Buddy's place with a case of beer and we just could live in Skyrim. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Bro, I'm just struggling right now because like I'm really trying to dial in on the music and plugins. Like, and fucking, I get distracted, dude. I get so distracted. I mean, I haven't gamed in a long time and I don't really feel like it's such a great idea to, you know, just pick up gaming and Ignore music. I'm trying but to get I, I wouldn't mind. music production because that's more fun than developing to me. I don't know about you. Um, yeah. But a lot of times I find myself, I want things that don't exist. And that's why I had to build sweet spots. It's so much faster. I'm so happy it's done. It's like super fast. However, I don't have a lot of time to use it in the mornings, but I'm just doing patching, right? So, but that's supposed to be my stream time is um, mornings like that. I wish there was more time, maybe. I guess once I start songwriting, um, it'll be the weekends, right? I'll totally be done. What's it called? Development. I'll be done majority of development. Live. Well, it's going to be different because I'm moving away from sequencing. Like I said, I picked up the piano, the guitar, the drums, and the only one I really want to stick with is the... guitar so this is maxwell bold all caps maxwell bold and then i imagine word memorize like you can type fast without looking uh sort of not really i like to look i'm not one of those people that's a thousand words a minute i got that but i could a wpm (laughs) <laughs> fingers. Did we only see your fingers? Okay, so Maxwell Light, yeah. all caps. Maxwell Regular, all caps. Okay, so those are done, done, and done. Mm-hmm. Just looking. So fonts are in. Files are in. We have the icon is in. You have this all saved, you sure? Yeah, I can hit save right now. I'm saved. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I'll, I'll put it in the cloud. I'll put it in the cloud even. I get scared. Okay, so here it is, output directory. No, 
sped up location. That's why it keeps throwing it in that folder. Let's see what happens if we pull that out. And then, so that's where that, I just want to make sure that statue pops up. So it should just be dumping right there. Hopefully, It might get through an error, like control Z. Yeah, okay. Control Y, save and go. So this is the final test, like for the whole thing. Oh. Okay, so it's not seeing that file. I don't know if it's the final test. I think it's got a space again. Why does it look like a space again? Super sync. Trying to read this right now. Yeah. Legit. Looks right. No, I'll just copy the whole name straight over. Oh, there's the brackets. That's it. I don't know where you go oh, because Discord oh, there was bracket. Yeah, Discord pulled them down again. So let's put them back. Because <laughs> it's a it's a staple of Discord. Yeah, it just totally chewed up these file names, eh? Um it's a staple of uh Flowstone. Okay, so let's yeah. build there. So yeah. after you click this, you it should legit download the plugin to your thing and you can run it on FL, you think? Yeah, I'm not sure 100% if this is the final build here. We're just we're doing a release candidate, just usually called, but I mean it's an installer, so. I think it'll probably work though, so I'm really excited. I'm hoping. I think it could be complete. We'll see. Question is, where did it put it? Okay, so this is that there. I don't know where it put it. I don't know where it put it. Output. Yeah, there it is. Man, why is there my setup here? Okay, um, so that's where it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and install it then. Uh, again, I prefer common files. Why does it version one at the top though? Hmm. Is that just the name of the thing? Version one, my app version one. Oh. Uh, Let's see if we can change yeah. that. I don't know. Does mine say that? I feel like it doesn't, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's not the biggest deal. I was just wondering because it's kind of like not necessary. I think it might be hard coded. Yeah, sweet swap search. It's not even capital. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I know it's like really like you capitalize it at least. <laughs> Set up. Set up. Whatever, it's fine. I don't care. Okay. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like there's anywhere. That that can be changed. I'm getting nervous. I'm getting nervous. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm just gonna I wonder if I can do that. I wonder if it'll let me just do this. Two. And again, this is two. Next. And where'd the what do you call it menu boom? We'll have to look at that. So installing the DLLs, I can see it live. I think it downloaded the font. <laughs> yeah, it just went right through. Okay, so let's check the this first. This is doesn't look like that made it. They proofs. I did. Okay. Oh yeah, they proofs. Let's go to zane.com. Done. X Y Z. Okay. So that works. That's working. Then we're going to check the fonts, the fonts, and then we're called Maxwell or Maxwell. Maxwell. We have one, two. It looks like we're missing a light. Two font faces. Okay, so yeah. it does have light. It's just not okay, showing. Yeah, so it does work. Yeah, it's they're just cousins, right? So they it kind of groups them yeah. together. I don't know why Maxwell regular isn't a cousin. Whoever wrote the font didn't. Group them together. LMAO. Okay, so I now have okay. Maxwell fonts. Mm. And now we have to do the mega test. The final is test. Studio, right? Yes, indeed. And then my refresher takes a little while. So you'll have okay, to. You have 10,000 plugins. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. I got a. Full mode, dude. I just, uh, I just updated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw up my browser here because I got to do some installing. Yeah, this is going to freaking. It's gonna dox email. Yeah, it's gonna dox me. Get doxed. 
Mm-hmm. Please tell me you updated though. Yeah, I got the latest update. I'm not sure that you're on stream right now uh, because I don't think I installed you on my. What do you call it? You want to say something? Hey. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> you're hearable. They can hear you, but we can't see. So okay, I'll be back. But uh, oh yeah, dude, you got to put a theme on your FL Studio, dude. It looks ugly. I'm I did have a theme. It looked a little darker, but like it still looked. Oh, a theme? No way! I'm old school, boom. Bro, put light mode. I'm old school. Did you know they're supposed to uh, upgrade a light mode? You and your angelic light mode stuff. Because it's look how dark it is. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. (laughs) (laughs) I can't even see it. You can see it. It's funny. You can see it, and I can. Oh, because my uh, what do you call it? Freaking. Yeah, but all I can see is OBS. And this box. Transparent again. Gonna hold. Oh yeah, okay. I'll bring your full op- opacity back there. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, this song is huge. Mm-hmm. I don't even think I played it actually yet. I, I gave I went on this forum and I was like, can you stop shoving songs in people's face when doing the mm-hmm. installer? Yo, sometimes though, this the FL Studio songs have some nice presets in there, like a nice bass sound. Yeah. Okay. So let's go find new empty. I mean it should it should be in the uh the installer, right? I don't know. Okay, so now this is gonna take half hour to search for. So right click, wait, not manage. Right click. Sometimes it's really fast and sometimes it's slow. It's because I have this thing. It's like a uh, VST. There used to be this thing called DXI. It's like VST. It was like Windows. Microsoft made a pl- audio plugins back in the day and they were called DXI. So I had this. Uh, DXI? Yeah, I had this shell wrapper. And whenever uh, the scanner sees it, it's like, what the hell is this? And it looks at it for a little while. Yeah. That's why I'm pretty sure that's why it takes so long. I gotta remove that shell thing. It was for Band Lab, um, Cakewalk. Cakewalk has like a, it's called a sound module, right? So it has like all the instruments built into it. But I mean, they're not really that great. It's like general MIDI. But I wanted to check it out. I wanted to see if I could get it in FL Studio. And I did, but yeah. It's just really crap, not really crappy instruments, but really. Unexpressional instruments, we'll see. Mm. Okay, so done here. But oh, we did get that uh, menu though, but it didn't allow us to change the name of it. So I don't know the name of what your um, the start menu group name. It just didn't even give the option. It's just like, yeah, that, there you go. Mm. So, Everything looked good though so far, right? Though no bugs known. Yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, I liked everything when I, that I saw. Icons. Such a fucking upgrade, though. Like I, I think the installer just makes it so much easier for everybody. Run what? Okay, that must be just start the program. So you have work tomorrow or you're chilling? Work. Monday to Friday. Damn. Job on. I was hoping to get into the lab all this week, but then my freaking hard drive crashed and not crashed, it corrupted. And I lost a Windows professional. And yeah, so next week hopefully I'll get to look at my Comi Q is what I wanted to do. Because I wasn't included with sweet spots. I had to remove it. Otherwise, sweet spots would have been too heavy. So Comi Q is gonna have to be its own thing. Comey Q, what the heck is that? Comey Q. It's okay. So well, let's finish up this symbol. It's talking about everything. installed new effects. No, it's not an effect. It's a generator, but it's vaporwave synth. And put it there. And did I? Come no way! You? No way! Sixty-four so bits. It's, it's kind of a big plugin. Like it low key, low key takes a second. It's probably the installing. I think it was uh, many of the, what's it called? 
those stone plugs, they come with a wave table and it has to install the wave table yes. one time. Oh, so dar, she blows. It makes sound though, that's the thing. Oh, I can't move. There we go. Yeah, but the release is super strong. I bet you, you probably couldn't hear that, eh? No, I can't. No, I your stream can. Uh, the stream probably could. I'll put that out to. Am I doing here? Headphones? Yeah, this. It looks so sexy right now. <laughs> the stream could, but uh, you can't because you're on Discord, right? And Discord doesn't write yeah. desktop audio, and I'm not sharing my desktop with you. I mean, I could. Kind of already, yeah, I might be double the sharing of desktop. Um, so I need a better preset here because that was really noisy. Mm. This one is good. What am I looking for? I said this is number two. I gotta turn it down on my headphones because that was really loud for me. My bad. It oh, oh. oh my goodness. Okay, it's low key. Let's go with good. E that's fine. Minor? Let's go G. Major. Get a little playful with it. My buffer's dying because my buffer's set to super fast, so let's triple buffer. Oh, did I turn it off? I turned it on, then back off again. That should bring more stability. No, it wants more. Is is vaporwave synth just shitty built? No, it's just that my buffer's turned right down. So. Send plug in review or no? No, I've been super busy. Damn. Damn. But I'm pretty sure I know my way around. I did something kind of different than normal for that vid. But Interesting. It's, 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 it's so awesome that Flowstone has the wireless, makes things so much easier. Like this, it's pretty amazing. What do you think? The you know how how hard it would be built to build this sort of a matrix in FL or in synthetic. It would be so brutal, and it would also could chunk the GUI. Just this GI GUI piece alone would be could chunky. Look at how fast that refreshed. Nice, <laughs> but you didn't you didn't get the resizer in. I have to bug uh, your bro to on the right look into resizing. There's a thread on the Flowstone forum for resizing. There's a, a if you see on and the, I lost the, top, I was too you see the vaporwave synth text. I lost them. Oh, well, because I turned my headphones down. Like a magnifying glass that lets you resize. My bad. I totally was I muted the stream in my headphones. Second, uh, it's like a little um, because I know Flowstone can do it. It's a resizer. Uh, what would it be? Sort of something like let's look at EQO. And then you can grab the corner and resize. Yeah, that's one way to resize. In Vaporwave, it's just um, it's just a magnifying glass. You can set different percentages. Okay, that's that's decent. Uh, where is it? It's to the left of the main button. Oh yeah, okay. It's to the right of the yeah, right there, right there. Nice. You can put like whatever. Shabam! Massive. You can get right into the detail. That's cool. If you click on that, look, it's all slick. The, the, Nice. Are you gonna be really small? Nice. Yeah, that's something you can't do in uh, synthetic at all. We even have friggin' tooltips. Yeah, if you hover over the knobs, it took a lot of work. I bet. I don't even have that. That's oh, a lot, a lot of fucking work. Then you have an FX panel. Let's go. One twenty-five. Still too big. Too big. One hundred is probably best. Yeah. 100 is even huge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I was like, which is default? <laughs> and it's it's not bad. The aliasing is a little bit. You can see the aliasing a little bit on the font, but it's fine, I suppose. At 100%, you could still kind of see it. No, it looks normal. Must be just something that um, could even be FL Studio doing that, chewing on it a little bit. I don't even know what aliasing is. It's like jagged. Hmm. When you get into close, everything looks good. When you shrink down, it's a little bit. But it's fine. It's better than you can... 
FL Studios awful stuff. Where is it? Classic. GMS looks like crap. Everything's just all cut chuttery. Mm. And there is a no scaling mode. Um, so FL Studio does have something called no scaling mode. And then it, it cleans things up. Like everything looks 100% smooth. But uh, I can't remember what's wrong with it. There's something wrong with it. It makes it uh, less responsive or something. Mm. The grain engine. Yeah. There's a lot of effects, bro. Streaming reverb. Spatial dimension. Room tracer is a reverb. Some delay. It's a monster. Yeah, sounding effects. Yeah. <laughs> it's a. I don't, I don't know what's called it, a mothership plugin or whatever. The freaking. I forgot the term. But it has everything pretty much. Cool. Reorder. Can you? So, there's an ARP even. You can reorder these? Uh, at the top, you see like how there's... Okay. A, I was wondering what that was. The solution we had. Nice. That's really important for some things like com uh, compression. I don't think you have a compressor though. No, that's the one thing we don't have yet. We have to build one. Because like we, we found some online, but like they're not really working very good. So we're probably gonna get work on that within the next couple months. Yeah, the audio release is difficult to do, and release has to be sort of precise. Otherwise, it gets, it sounds distorted. Mm -hmm. But like but that's good though. Working version right now, most Especially of the like, bugs that I knew of are pretty much fixed. Putting this distortion before or after reverbs probably important. Lo-fi, like a lot of things. Reordering these are important, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Word. Sweat. One oscillator. So there's two oscillators. You can blend the sounds. There, I don't know. It's kind of complicated. The, I'll have to look at the video. I did. Yeah, I'll have to look at the video. Everything kind of like intentionally, but. So it's running. Get it for now. I'll definitely have to do the review. I don't know if this is uh, my my call. Do I get a copy? <laughs> oh, of course, bro. Of course. I mean, because I didn't give you a copy. Uh... Hey, whatever you want. Oh, fuck. Did I crash you? I think so. Bro, Vaporwave is low key, needs to get optimized. But it seems like, dude, the fact that it's working off that installer, like, that means it works. So I think, I think we're done with the installer portion. Do you agree? I. Th Feel like you, it is done. There's only other small things like the intro and outro readmes, and that's it. Yeah, pretty much everything's done. So I could package this up and I'll send that to you. And then I want to talk a little bit after this. That no, not Booski. Just gonna make sure here that I'm grabbing everything. So Ico. But the uh, VSTs, there's four of them. There's the installer. I do believe that's the wrong installer. So let's go ahead and delete that. The right installer is in here. Cut that, drop it here. Then the is file, that's what I'm looking for. What is the is file? This file is called tester2. So this is now called Vaporwave Synth Install. And then I'm going to take everything else, like the Brewski font and the Apple, everything irrelevant, and just toss it up here, just so it's out of the way. So this is the complete package here. I'll go ahead and zip yeah. that. We'll zip us into installer. I guess so. Zip. I'll just rename it. Seven zip, or do you want zip? Uh, whatever you like. Zip's cool. One seven zip. Zip's cool. Yeah. You have seven zip, right? Seven zip. What the fuck? It's default with Windows. It's the all encompassing compression thing. Whoa. Actually, actually, it doesn't. It though easy. It doesn't come with Windows. So actually, I'll package it into a zip then, just because that's Windows. That's is. bad. No worries. So we'll send that to seven zip, send to, and to install. Why did it go so fast and why did it look like there's only one file? 
Okay, so we're gonna close that. Yes. Or delete that now. And my seven zip thing, it doesn't like opening things. For, okay, so it's all in there. Cool. Word. So you have the installer. If you ever need to change it, you can just build directly from this folder. Make sure you keep everything together. And here's your final installer there. Damn, you are a freaking legend. It did look like we lost the icon, though. It'll probably show up on your end just because there was already a thumbnail here. And I should be able to see my... Uh, Thumbnail files, but I guess I can't see it. So whatever. Um, I want Discord. So through Discord, it's fine. Yeah, that's cool. If it if it's small enough to send, because I know hundred megs things are too big. I can turn up compression on it. I'm sure how well it to saying, yeah. Oh, too powerful. Maximum five five K. So you might have to repackage it on your end. What I'll do is I'll you open can send our it on drive off stream or something. Um, well, we'll see if we can turn up compression here. So we'll go. In a glitch. And then go 7-zip add to archive. And we'll go compression level ultra. <laughs> and then the, uh, it's going to take a little while to unzip on your end, but It'll make it through. Okay, so did I delete this? Well, oh, there's a second one there. But I mean, computers are fast this day. Let's see what it comes out as. You can actually do something called tarball, which you can turn something into like a super small file. What it does is it takes the file, puts it into an algorithm, or a, uh, what's it called? An encryption. And then it takes the encryption and chops it up into little pieces and squishes it down. So. Overkill. It's a it's a bit of a pain though. You're always teaching new stuff like I never heard of. Tarballs they are kind of old. Back in my day, <laughs> a long time ago, there never used to really be compression, and compression was kind of expensive. Like you used to have to pay for WinZip. The, the original was here. called Punk Zip. Uh, First one. Bro, okay, is no. compression to me though sounds like it's gonna mess up the file. No, didn't work. We're still at 131, so it's going to have to come through the cloud then. All right. It's okay. So I'll shoot you that now, I guess. I'll delete this installer. And then I'll throw up the, the browser thing so I'm not putting my drive on display for the world. Gmail leak. Mm, yeah, the you know. Vaporwave synth now, though. If you ever need those Vaporwave analog sounds, bro, I highly recommend Vaporwave synth. They're yeah. very. It has a lot of randomized pitchness in there, but it's like warm and unique. I think it's fun to use sometimes. Very distinctive sound with the effects. So if you ever need, you got that now in your arsenal of weapons. Definitely. I got to get to doing, doing Well, first, I'm just going to be fixing up my beats, my catalog, get my catalog redone. I got to do a couple presses. I've been sitting on my burner for forever. And then I look, yeah, like albums, music. I've got Buddy's track I've been hanging on to from, yeah. But Buddy's album EP that I've been sitting on for like 10 years. He hasn't been too happy about it, but we had a falling out. So yeah. Mm. That was a collab album? No, it's just him. Mm. It was supposed to be a collab album, but like I said, we had a falling out. So, and then I want to go all the way back to my first release and redo that. That's it's a rap group. Um, we jacked beats, so I'm actually going to replace mm. all the beats with my beats. And then I want to do the. I want to do the synth guitar. What? Yeah, <laughs> but during this time, is a comb filter. And then I'm doing a, a B child, well, blank child, it's called. And then I'm going to do blank tech. So that's an EQ and a compressor, just really crappy. And they're going to have like a really huge price tag. It's sort of to make fun, fun of the industry and the thousands of times people be remaking the same thing over and over again. There's my inboxes. 
It would be a thousand dollars, man. Bro, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, it's just a joke. It's for rich people. Like, they can blow their money. Mm. And say I'm rich. It's gonna... Zero rich yeah. mastering people out there. I probably won't even use it. I want to add little things to it, but that's pretty much all it's going to be. It's just going to be um, mm. a joke, mostly. Okay, so this is mm. done. This is sent to you. I guess I can back up the work myself. Uh, uh, no, save any. Close that. I'm actually going to put up my background just so that it's kind of the fallback after that closes. And that can be closed. That can be closed. And that can be closed. And that just on to discussion, I guess. So. Yeah. What's next for you? Oh, you emailed it to me legit. Yeah. Okay. I see. Except it sits in the drive. It was still too big for the uh, email, so they threw it in the drive. It's being served from the drive. But yeah, I mean, I guess I kind of want to just... You are kind of explaining already your like future stuff you're working on. Because, like... So, Sweet Spots, you don't need to do much more. It's, it's final. Done. No. I'm gonna expand it, but not till next season. For Years sometime. Next season will be winter, so that's coming up soon. I'll say winter, uh, fall, falls come autumn, whatever's coming. Maybe I'll give it a facelift in autumn, hmm. and then I'll put some functional stuff in for winter. But I mean, it's getting a whole bunch of features. It's, it was supposed to have more like the comb filter. I really wanted in it, but it's gonna it'll be way too greedy because each band will have to have a comb filter. And that's too many knobs. Oh. Right? Too many knobs. And the comb filter, it's just gonna have to be for sweet spots too. Because each octave has 12 notes and yeah. <laughs> that's a lot so, of that's a lot of knobs. You posted sweet spots on KVR? Yeah. I didn't even look like, to see if I got any feedback or anything. And the newest plugin list? I did the news, or I did the, the plugin list, the database, and then I did a press release the next day or the, the news thing, and then I went into the forum and I threw up a thread there. I didn't go back to the thread just because I don't really care too much. People want to come through, they can come through. Um, there's still a lot of questions. A lot of people have been asking me, what does it actually do? So I have to make more videos. I was supposed to do that today. Revamp the uh, overview because the intro got cut. So that'll have to wait till next weekend. And then... You don't have KBR right now. What Fire. I want to do is, as I go along, I'm going to start snipping pieces out of my workflow and just saying, like, sweet spots in action until I can get, like, Ooh. to a point where I could be like, you know, this is it off and this is it on. There's before and after sort of thing. So until then, it's just going to be sweet spots in action. And then I'll kind of make dedicated videos. I'll go into my session videos and then kind of cut those out. And those will sort of sit in YouTube. And then hopefully people can get an idea. I also went to the Flipside forum and I posted there. Of course, it's pretty dead there. So. But I mean, it's mm -hmm. homage, right? It's old school. Uh -oh. so, any sales yet or? Not even. Tire, just tire kickers. <laughs> I actually, tire kickers. that's what they're called. Yeah. Um, I did get someone email me and they're like, is this install offline? And I was like, yeah, but they never got back to me after that. So. Mm. And I mean, the price tag is pretty intimidating, but I mean, that's why I have the individual versions too. So How much for an individual 10 bucks and that's Canadian. So like seven bucks us. Hmm. Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad at all. <clears throat> Did you have a default, like just the overall sweet spots, or are they as every single one specialized? You know what I mean? The default one is the descriptive. That's because it has the most bands. So what I did was I had the 16 bands, and then I started ripping them away to make the individual instruments. That was all that time sitting there programming. Mm -hmm. oh buggering about with it over and over again and then it was testing the numbers and it was constant constant testing it's pretty pretty cool. but it's it's constantly tested and when i went back for the second round of testing it was a good idea that it did because i'd found a lot of numbers were off 
small things were problems. Even the installer had problems. Like right now, the installer, all the 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 band. If we look, the band. Um, stuck over there. That's your installer. the The band pack has it's 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 upside down. But I mean that's fine. It, it's not functional. Like it doesn't affect upside down. It doesn't affect anything. But like it's in reverse order. So if we look at the orchestra pack, it goes A, B, C, right? A, B, C, D, and then up yeah. to B. Well, if we look at the band pack, it's it starts with T. Oh, I don't even realize S M P. So it's backwards, right? It's just something oh, I overlooked. Okay. Other than that, it's uh yeah. Decent. It's the release. Okay. So, are you trying to? Were you trying to get rich off this plugin, or what are your? This was mainly for me. I would like to see some sales. Definitely, I'm not sure that I'll ever see like a three hundred dollar sale pack, the full pack. I do hope to see at least the individual ten pack sell, especially for like the drums, because everybody really likes the drums. But really, people have to understand what it does. So I got to do more uh, marketing videos, and it might have been a good idea beforehand to do the marketing videos. However, it's the type of plugin like how I am with my tools is I don't really like to share them. I only bring things up to a professional level for myself, really. And the releases are mainly because I want to share. But because nobody understands what it is, it's a good thing. I kind of got first dibs on it. That's pretty much what I want is I want first dibs. So I, I get the signature sound first kind of thing before everybody else can have it. This is like hot off the press it's the exclusive right nobody knows what it is yet and i feel like when people start to figure out what it is it might become um sort of uh what's the one the serum it might become a serum and i'm kind of worried about that because the licensing system is uh individual right so if people are going to be bugging me for it all the time for years to come so i might even have like a death day for it in maybe three years in three years, it'll be no longer available just because I want to move on. And that's another reason I want to look at um, the authorization systems as far as using Ether, Solidity combined with C++, combined with um, Node and React and everything just to get this holistic package so I can automate sales and people can get their license keys and oh, yeah. avoid pirates. And then I might be able to bring down the price. All right? what, what the biggest point I find here is unlimited lifetime free updates. That's not something I'm offering. So mm. I'm planning to give the facelift for free and I'm going to give a discount for the functional upgrade. So like the individuals are $10, $7 American. What I'm going to aim for after the final cut with all the new features, it's going to be like uh, $10 American. So our $10 US, whatever that is, Canadian, it'd be like I don't know, 13 bucks, I think. So that's kind of its wiggle room, right? And then okay. the full pack will probably jump up to like 300 total, but there'll still be that percentage savings. So that's the pricing strategy is that there's no lifetime free updates because it's if I have to give out new license keys to everybody. It's like, yeah, you know, I got a new version here. You got a new license key. And, yeah. right, and that's just to avoid pirates. So it's all a bunch of hoo-ha that I could probably just get rid like of. Like an account system? What do you mean? Like having an account that you log into? and then Yeah, like that's what I, my end goal is. It's something more like Plugin Alliance or FL Studio where you have your pop-up, you log in, and then it authorizes. However, mm -hmm. it's not going to be... See, Plugin Alliance and FL Studio, they use localized servers. So when you're logging into your account in FL Studio to authorize FL Studio, it's sending telemetry to F, uh, to what is it, Belgium, right? FL Studio is made in Belgium to their servers wherever they are. They probably might not even be in Belgium. So, and then those servers look at the account and they say, "Okay, this person bought this, you know, version," and they send it back to your FL Studio, and your FL Studio is authorized. That's called local localization. Well. Centralization, rather. With Ether, with Bitcoin, with cryptocurrency, crypto contracts, that type of stuff, it's decentralized. So instead of the telemetry going to one place, it goes to everybody that has 
the, the blockchain. People who carry the blockchain, they get a cut out of every sale of instruments or effects that are on that blockchain, as well as the producer or the vendor, they get a cut. And then who is ever on, you know, I'll get a cut from everything <laughs> because I'm the developer of that authorization system, but it's very small. And most of the cut, ideas. most of the cut will go to the, the vendor. And I want to make it easy. I want to make it easy for the vendor. I want synth edit synths and effects to have that level of protection and they get a good cut. So I don't even think I'll charge anything for the third party module. You just throw it into your synth edit. You can authorize, you have an authorization system and it's that advanced. It's the next level. It's that high end registration system and it's decentralized. There's no bankers. There's no tech heads. Well, I'm the tech head in the way. There's not a lot of hands in the pockets is what I'm saying. So it's it's a dream. We'll see if it works out. It might be unsec- unsecure. Vicious as fuck. Because um, there's something called the 50% attack. And that's something that crypto contracts, crypto smart contracts and stuff like that are, they have a problem with. So if someone has, you know, a fake version of the keys, they can just attack and take over. But a lot of times that's not really a thing. Um, it's mostly gets blocked. It's like at one time the whole ether system crashed and they had to restart it. Oh. So it's it's a give and take. And like I said, I'm not sure hundred percent sure if it's gonna work, but it will help the community. And this also goes into samples. And the question is, how do you um authorize samples in a blockchain? It's not possible. So we'll see. You know, I always believe nothing's impossible and plausible. Or you need to work with other people. That's the thing about ether and stuff like that is that you don't really need to work with anybody else. So what my biggest um, red flag there is just competitors. So, for example, the Flowstone guy, Mayak or Maiko, he's probably, I don't know if he's going to want this system too. So either he can sign up for, you know, mine and we can share it. Or he can make his own. So he'll become a direct competitor, but he also has to learn um, Solidity, C++, which he probably already knows, but probably doesn't know Solidity. But yeah, so that's the biggest drawback, is that someday there might be 50 you know, different authorization systems. But how many will be, you know, have its own dedicated third-party module for synth edit? And this also opens up the doors for big vendors like iLock, you know, they have their own security system they spent years on. Um, mm-hmm. Steinberg. Them. So, yeah, it's just, it's, it's it's sort of a pipe dream. And we'll see if it I works people out. People want what's most convenient and just, like, best. But, yeah, it's definitely hard. And the, yeah, You have to please the user and the developer, which is, like, conflicting. Yeah, the biggest, hard, the hardest part probably is going to be currency conversion. Because... How does the developer get paid? How does the customer pay? Because it's if it's crypto, then it's gonna yeah, be, it's gonna be like Bitcoin or something that the, the customer has to show up Ethereum with. Ethereum would probably be yeah. The, well, Ethereum is a smart contracts. What's it called? Framework. So Bitcoin's Bitcoin. Ethereum can be turned into coin. That's how it works. So you can build on top of Ethereum. You take your Ethereum. And you trade them in for, say, JWP coin, right? Mm -hmm. And then you (laughs) get just JWP coin, right? And then customers have to go buy JWP coin in order to buy, you know, this vendor's plugin on the JWP Ethereum subnet. (laughs) It's complicated, right? Yeah. And then the vendor, when they sell their plugin, they get JWP coin. (laughs) It's just an example. It probably won't be called JWP coin. That would be ridiculous. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn. That's that really, the system. That opens up so much stuff, though, with like the audio industry. Once you start. In the other end, the, those smart contracts. The reality is the JWP coin instantly gets traded for Ethereum, which in turn gets instantly traded for US dollars. So there's also something called stable coin. 
And now JWP coin might not be worth, you know, 50 cents, 25 cents, 10 cents. It all depends on how many people start using the platform. So the more developers that use it, the more expensive JWP coin will become, just like Ethereum is expensive. The more people that use it, the more it becomes. But it's entry level, so it scales. Uh, you know, a quarter of a JWP coin will be worth just as much as you need. So that's how it works. Mm. But there is like bankers and stuff doing something called arbitrage, which is important for the network, but it's sort of like a leak of money. But I mean, that's just how it comes with the platform, comes with the territory. Damn. Okay, so I have another question. So like, what are your, like, I know you kind of discussed this, but like, what are the top three projects or things that you're working on then? Like most important things right now, like for the next couple months, you think like highest priority related to plugins or music in general or life in general? your entire like online career and like art music stuff. Like what's the main focus for the next couple of months? So career in general, I got to maintain sweet spots in marketing and delivery. Um, Primo beats. I'm going to be redoing the catalog along with the tracks from the past. Those have to be re-uploaded. The only album that I ever made it off my press was Camerazon's Real Eyes, which was homage to the rap group Real Eyes he started with. There was always this dispute, who was the leader? Um, but he was the first one to step out and do an exclusive solo album. And then, so there was the rap group's original album, which I want to redo. I have a whole bunch of songs never pressed i have a website full of songs right i want to redo those Mm. so it's just a lot of redoing stuff and that's why sweet spots was so important because the tools that i have are so dull like having to fight with fl studios peq and move the eqs around target instruments sweet spots all the time and having presets and then they don't sit under a band so they constantly move around and sweet spot is the ultimate goal the ultimate tool to break, break through all of these instrumentals quickly. So yeah, I mean, I cut, mm-hmm. I do an instrument, a stream in an hour. It's been seeming like so, maybe two, and then I have, I think, probably three hundred beats with about you know four to eight instruments each. So it's gonna be a while. But Sweet Spots helps speed it up, and is- definitely, it's so fast, and I'm so I'm like, it's like a new tool for me, even though I made it. I don't know what it does. I don't know its potential, its power. And so far, it's been really good. I like the, what it does. It does it fast. However, I want to play with it. I want to see what it can do. And I don't have time for that. So I'm just like, okay, that's done. It sounds good. Okay. You know what I mean? And then I'll probably have to go around the primo beats a couple times before I get things where I want. Because my latest bass, that I, the last bass I did, it was cutting through the mix. I just you know, crank the saturator or the exciter. And it just growly, it was really growly. And I want it smooth. So I got to go back and I got to turn down the exciter and less drive and get it smooth or pick a different distortion type. So that's where all that is. I also have some other side projects that I've been doing. I've been doing this um, multi-stream layout thing so that I can see all my streams at once. Um, that's with web code, uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I also got to look at React. So how are you feeling about the multi-streaming right now? Well, it fell apart for me. There was a time there I was using the wrong server and I was using the built-in OBS tool to serve to live push. By server, you mean? I was using LA. And then I started using Montreal. And what was happening is my latency was increasing, increasing, increasing. So I'd be streaming in the first 10 minutes, it would be okay. I'd be like, you know, late 30 seconds, late 15 seconds. But after about 15 minutes, you know, 30 minutes, I was like 10 minutes behind. So I couldn't do music feedback. People would be talking to me like you were there. You come through on streaming, hey, GWP. And then I wouldn't even notice you to like way later. It was like a fucking long delay. Yeah. So that's fixed, which is great. And that's good. I was ready to go back to Twitch. I was that ready to go back to Twitch because my, my cloud editing stuff, the videos wouldn't make it all in completion to the cloud, right? I'd have chunks missing from the videos and I need those videos to edit later. So that's all fixed though. As far as multi-streaming, it's brutal. There's a lot to consider, like my chat box. Um, there's so many more platforms and BandLab's are really busy. People on BandLab are crazy. They want the music feedback. That's all they do on BandLab, it seems like. They just throw their links around. 
and they don't make any money off it. But, you know, they're young and that's fine. I do got some, you know, pro class people that come through and they share their music and they're on like Spotify or YouTube. And I have no problem with that. That's why I started the new JWP stream YouTube. So I can take copyright strikes there and not lose JWP. Can I rant real quick, bro. Like how are people not willing to freaking just donate a little bit, bro? Like I've gone, I've done some feedback before. Like I, when I made a song last year and like I donated, like I didn't even think in my mind that someone would do it for free. Like I've done like the streams that I do on like plugin development with like vaporwave synth and like my other DMB machine, like people will come in and just spam like I want feedback, like give me feedback, but like yeah. no one's ever willing to freaking like give back to the person who's taking time out of their day to freaking do the feedback. Do this for them. Like what the heck? It's it's a streamer thing. So people do that stuff every day. Some people do the feedback every day and they get they gain they gain momentum. And then people are tripping over themselves to get the feedback and they just want to broadcast because there's other people that are getting feedback. So it builds up and then they want line skip, right? So they want to be first. They want to be next. They'll pay a dollar for line skip. And then after line skip, they want, you know, the good feedback or whatever. They want you to focus on the song longer. So they pay for, you know, paid feedback. So mm -hmm. it's just momentum. If you, if you want a certain thing, if you have a certain niche, you have to stick to it. My niche is computer programming and music production. Music feedback is just something I do because I want to, because I like the hype. I like the fame a little bit. I just want to taste it. I'd love to, you know, be one of those streamers that just does feedback all the time, but that's not what I do. I'm a musician first. I'm not a feedback guy. Um, I could You're good at it though. Cause me personally, like I'm definitely not. Well, that's a lot that. of these feedback guys aren't. They just, yeah, cool, bro. I like the way that sounds or, you know what I mean? Like they're not even doing anything technical you know, they're who, even fake it though. Like, who are they you know, to like, yo, this is trash. Be giving this feedback? Mm -hmm. They're not like on a Grammy award winning producer to be like, oh, yes, you know, what I mean? my feedback is gold. But they get, they, they're probably making triple digits, if not quadruple digits, getting thousands of dollars every month on Twitch. They're sitting around drinking beer and saying, cool, bro, that sounds great. You know what I mean? But they do that every day. So that's your life. It's, yeah, cool, bro, that sounds good. Cool, bro. That sounds good. Over and over and over. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, if that's what you want to do, all the power to you. But I want to make music. I want to make music and I want to write songs. I want to do cool things. Mm -hmm. Lastly, the other project I'm doing, I've talked about it before already, so I'll probably kind of mention it. It's a religious thing. And I'm a, pag a pagan Anthonist. However, it's, a, it's an app where you look at different virtues, something a lot of people don't do anymore. It's like, what the hell does chivalry mean? I mean, it's not something you go out every day and be like, I'm going to be chivalrous. Like, I mean, what does it even mean? You know what I mean? Or, you know, some, some be holding the door open for the ladies. <laughs> or like gluttony. You know what I mean? Am I suffering from gluttony? How much do I eat? So it's kind of an app that keeps track of your virtue and your sin. But I don't put it on that level. These are life experiences. And you can also, you know, target certain virtue or sin. So you can be like, I want to go out yeah. and be decept deceptful today. You know what I mean? So what are examples of deceit? You know what I mean? You can look at example. <laughs> you know, you could tell a bad, you know, a lie or, you know. And then I want to make it so the app built a tree. So you, you type in, you know, your life. You know, I grew up poor. I was sad a lot. I lost my dog at this age. And the app will build a tree of colors or words. And you can look at your life from a glance. And it shows, you know, your sad points, your happy points, you know, like, so it's, it's, it's you. And people, they get this misconstruity that like what they do for work is who they are, like doctors or pilots and stuff. They think, you know, I'm a pilot. So, you know, I fly, but like, that's not who you are. Who you are is what you've been through. It's your virtue and your sin. It's what makes you who you are. Generally, that's what it is. It's not what, you, you know, what you do for work. So, I mean, it's probably not going to catch on it's something I want. Like I said, I build these things for me first. And a lot of times I'd be like, it's a really cool idea. Temperance is some of the thing that keeps coming back to me. I've been trying to avoid it mostly though. And temperance is putting yourself through a shitty situation to become stronger or putting yourself through, you know, lifting weights to become stronger. Temperance is that hammer on the anvil and you're kind of the, the piping hot steel. 
And then there's fortitude. So fortitude has been something that I've been, you know, embracing more, I'm trying to stick to things more. I finished sweet spots, so that's you know a shining example of fortitude. I've been trying to avoid humility because I went through, you know, growing up, I was humiliated a lot. I did a lot of humility. I don't like pride. Pride is a sin. A lot of people don't remember that, but pride gets you in a really big head. Um, in, in the accordance, it's honor, really, for me. That's kind of takes place for pride for me. I don't really care for pride. I prefer honor. You know, so I'm honored to deliver you, you know, sweet spots. It was a uh, fortuitous. <laughs> it wasn't fortuitous. Yeah, it was fortuitous. Fortu it was a fortuitous epic quest to build. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just like people don't talk like that. We don't know why we don't. We're just brainwashed yeah, by consumerism. It means. And it doesn't have a lot to do with, you know, creator or, you know, a lot of those mysticism things. It's mostly about people and their day to day and, and achieving something for yourself. So those are my kind of three big things happening. Yeah, I think that the app idea, very interesting. Definitely. And another another part that I want to do once it gets to an advanced section is like, say you have, you know, your tree or your your list of all your stuff. Well, say you piss somebody off, they can come to your tree and be like, you deceived me. And they could throw like a deceived thing on your app. And you, you know what I mean? But like, as a person, you could say, well, hide that. You know what I mean? Not everybody needs to see that. And they can also have like a professional branch. So, you know, the stuff you did at work, it was fortuitous. Sorry. Like there's lots. There's so many. Um yeah, that app could go very deep, I feel like. Yeah, well, I mean, it's almost like a criminal record, too, right? It's, it's kind of scary. Like a journal, a freaking lot of stuff. I, I wanted, I was still thinking about a name. It's like The Path or The Way or something. I don't know. But we're, I'm still shooting spitballing things. Mm. But I feel it'd be important to personal development. And I like the idea of, of other people being able to throw stuff at your tree. <laughs> mm. And then you can go throw stuff at other people's tree. It's interesting. It's a little more social. Like it, it writing down like stuff you did or whatever, like the sins or the freaking yeah. Just keeping keeping record of stuff. And then it kind of it should paints a picture. However, like how heavy is that? Where does that sit in like a computer network? You know, like how it's a lot of logistics still that have to be worked out. Well, right now I'm at the point where I have the ability to write to the hard drive, so. It's going to happen sooner than later where I can have this, you know, little funny app where I push a button and be like, uh, uh, I was proud today or, you know, I was, you know, and I also, I did, there's these old games, um, what's it called? Ogre battle. When it starts ogre battle, there's this wizard and he pops up and he has tarot cards and he asks you a question, you know, um, you know, a young boy steals from your shop because he's hungry for food. Um, do you... What's it, what's it called? Do you call the police? Hand off. Yeah, do you cut his hand off or do you know, you know, let him go and give him some more food? So when you choose a decision between those two, you know, you cut his hand off, you get a point for, you know, aggression or you get a point for justice, you know what I mean? And then you say you let him go, you get a point for compassion. Or you know what I mean? Like so you go you can have this little kind of thing where it presents you with situations and you decide what you would do. And um, this helps you determine who you are. Like, you know, in certain situations, it'll, it'll, it'll map out, you know, your responses. I mean, you could, you know, kind of mess with it and just pick all the really bad ones or something and see where it goes. But I mean, it's all, it's all a pipe dream, another pipe dream. Yeah. I just wish we could spawn our ideas in out of nowhere, but like, it's just, well, they say that it's not about the destination. It's about the journey, right? Like for me, I have a lot of really ambitious ideas right now. I've been connecting with more developers. Like you're always finding these guys. Oops. Huh? You're always finding these guys. It's like more developers. I mean, I'm always, I'm always hitting people up. Like if I see someone make a cool plugin, I'm gonna message them and try to like figure out like, oh, are you using? How'd you make it? Like, just figure out all the development side of it and like music side of how they're creating stuff. Cause like that's kind of I'm still really focusing on the music industry. Like I still want to take it over. I just get sad because like Vaporwave synth I'm really proud of, but now when I was working, like my, me and my Russian dev are kind of like he's really important to me right now because he just helps me make stuff way faster than if I had to do it alone. 
but like he's only 19 years old so it's like his computer and like development knowledge is still not you know like top tier as much as like someone who's been doing you know assembly for 40 freaking years so it's like we're kind of getting stumped a little bit on like how crazy of things we can create like i want to do some ai stuff and like some really ambitious new projects and it's kind of like well the ai stuff you got to keep in mind the ai stuff requires a graphics card right i have no idea bro <laughs> Honestly, like I've the the thing is there's um I don't want to overload you, but there's a developer I found on YouTube who released some like they have like a web synths and like you literally just click a button and it makes like new drum sounds and like new just like pad sounds or whatever the heck and you can kind of edit them on his virtual web synth and like download the waves. But like they're really really good for like being an AI thing. So I'm going to message them and try to figure out some, like... Because they're doing it with, like, GitHub code. That's what I noticed. Like, they find stuff on GitHub, and then they, like, make a plugin out of it, kind of. So, I don't know. <laughs> really deep. And I'm still in Flowstone right now. That's kind of... I'm thinking I'm going to stay with Flowstone for a while, but, like... Yeah, well, I'm you got a license for it, so that's great. Mm -hmm. I have a couple projects, though, like... I have a lot of ideas. Like, I want to upgrade some old stuff. Like, it's just, dude, I get, I just can't release something that isn't, that I'm not fully passionate on or something that I know could be better. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to put out something just because it's like, I want to release it. Like, I want to genuinely be super freaking passionate about what I'm creating and like, know that it's a banger. So that's kind of where I'm struggling right now. Just like figuring out who I can work with, how to bring this stuff to life. Because like, I'm trying to work really fast too. I don't want to spend a year working on one thing and then get it out. Like I want to have a new plugin every month, every two months, like bam, quick, fast speed, always having something I'm working on. <clears throat> uh, but yeah. It's definitely like the idea of building that fast is really sounds not stressful it's also kind of like how would you say cool as fuck, bro my hairs are falling out I'm disposable drained. like it feels like you might want to go for soundware which your sound which it sounds like it's like soundware um because generally that's so many ideas like something like synth wave or was it vaporwave synth like that's that's a holistic package that's a big piece that's you know that's a big deal that thing it's 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 two oscillators it has the modulation matrix it has an effects matrix it's pretty much the whole package um mm -hmm. i mean there's other synths that do different things however this one's you know geared towards vaporwave right so where do you go from there as far as pumping something out every month like you do you did that quite fast too was that a month or did it take you about two months it was about a month and eight days, maybe. Oh, pretty much a month, though. I mean, the thing is, like, we had a really rough version of it. Like, when I first met the developer, like, we made a rough version in literally, like, two days. And then we spent the last month, you know, adding a ton of features, getting all the design down. Like, <clears throat> And before that was the drum. And then before that was the laser gun. Mm -hmm. So it's been about three plugins in, like, four months, kind of. Oh, excuse me. So those are all instruments. Mm -hmm. my next one you want to know the idea real quick secret leak i guess so yeah well, you could you could just kind of dance around it if you want actually i have it drawn right here so this is kind of the rough idea i can try to explain it real quick it's for me specifically but this is my a plugin that i wanted so it'd be an effects plugin and basically you can spin this to get different like waveform sounds of electricity so like the outer layer and then in the middle layer it's like so there's going to be okay i'm sorry I'm, I'm sorry how i'm explaining this but there's going to be imagine there's a mix knob okay so you're like you have a bass sound or like whatever sound any sound okay then you turn this mix up your sound becomes electrified that's the idea that's the whole point of the plugin it electrifies your sound so you turn the mix up and then your sound is like becomes electric with some vocoding effects and stuff and you can like drag it in in the center. It's like an XY pad in the center. And that'll change like 
of the electricity texture and like the synth waveform that it bases off of. That's kind of my idea. I don't think it's a plugin that a lot of people want, but specifically like in some song ideas I have, I just like to, I want to make something from nothing to electric. So that's kind of my new idea, but I don't know. I, I, I'm just struggling right now because it's like I need money. So it's like, do I want to focus on something that's just for me or something more commercial? I don't know. It's just tough, dude. It's really tough. I just want to make it out the hood because like working at Amazon is not fun, dude. I'm really suffering. Amazon's the, one of the richest companies in the world, though. The only contestant up next to it is um, Tesla. So if you if you stay at Amazon, you have you have a life career there. Yeah, it's just like really repetitive every day. Like you're just getting. That's how it is. That's how it is at first. And three to five years now, someone's going to move you up. That's how it was. You got to stick around somewhere for three to five years before you move around. If you're really ambitious, you'll start to look into things like coaching. And once you go through coaching, like yourself, self coaching stuff, um, I mean, you can expand. You can take some night classes for management. You know what I mean, you can take some night classes for accounting if you want. I'd say management. For you, your ambitions are really plug-in centric. So I say for you now is that while you're still young, get on the boat for learning C plus plus and stuff. Like I said, it's it, it doesn't it feels Ooh, it feels alien. It feels alien at first, but once you once you're at once you get in there and you hang around there, it starts to feel like home. You have to make it home. So look at it. Outsource the development stuff. That's kind of my goal right now. Because then you're gonna be a capital venturist. Yeah, like you're you're not a product of your uh you're the money side. You're playing the money side. They're not kind of you. You're playing the money side. I told you there's three different kind of people in a business. There's the product specialist. There's the money specialist, and then there's the marketing specialist. So if you're moving the one moving around the money, you're the money specialist. And it's probably it's probably cut, cutting you down a little bit on the marketing and the product side, but you, you have your buddy there, Russian was Mike, right? Mike. His name's Alex. Alex, he's he's, he's your say. he's your product specialist. At least you have one. I'm just one guy, so like mm-hmm. I have I throw my money at QuickBooks, right? That, that handles it. But I'm not I'm not doing vent investing. I'm not ventures capitalist. I'm not investing. The things I'm investing in are actually mostly for streaming. I'm they're kind of toys right now. Mm. I'm sort of a bit on a toy run because <laughs> I mean speakers, headphones. Oh. Um, oh, you got a new mic, or you always had that one? I've always had this one. It was for a little while. It was when I had the lanyard, right, or the lavalier, and then it broke down. Yeah, 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 I remember that. So I had to use my studio mic. Um, but no, I couldn't write off anything because these were in previous years. Only the stuff in this year. So I do have some big purchases coming up. I'm looking at XR gear. I didn't want to say anything to you before. I'm, I, no, I'm only going to tell you that. XR gear. And you can go look it up. You'll be like, bro, bro. <laughs> so you'll see it when you see it. Um, after the XR gear, I'm getting an MPC. Baby, baby. I'm getting an MPC. Oh, damn. And I'm going to have to learn finger things. But it's for drums, right? Because I don't want to. Also, there's the air drum thing. I don't know if you see it. It's just drumsticks and these things that clip to your shoes. So you lift your you lift your ankle and you play air drums and it actually is drums. Like you imagine where the drums are in you. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I've actually seen that. But like, dude, I just hit a drum. Oh yeah. Last thing. Okay. We're gonna <clears throat> wrap this up very soon, unfortunately. Yeah, I gotta get to sleep. I just went to the studio yesterday, actually. Like I've been actually making music. Like that's kind of where I'm pivoting. Like I'm gonna upload a video either today or tomorrow, like making a song you can see me make a song if you want i think it's a, it was low-key kind of fire like i had a guitar person with me like i've just been having a lot of fun making music and this is what i realized when i went to the studio like i just couldn't really improvise on the spot as much as i wanted to like i didn't i don't know how to play guitar like i couldn't just make my own chords i didn't even know how to drum like i couldn't fucking keep up with the beat like just every aspect of music, I was just like, I just felt so behind. And like, I don't even know music theory still. Like, if I'm going to focus anything on life, it's probably going to be like making better music. And then like my art career and like 
all the social media stuff. Like I want to make plugins, but like, dude, I sold one vaporwave synth. Like, there's not really. It doesn't really seem like it's a reality that's gonna happen for me. Like, I don't know, man. I'm just in it about it, but like, spread I it out some more. If if you're gonna do monthly things, do soundware. And if you, soundware, soundware is like you have a sound like the the what was your sampler thing that you had? Their sampler plugin maker thing. Oh, the clock thing or weed synth? Yeah, rompler. Romplers. <laughs> Because you can pump that out every month. Yeah. Like you said, it's a kind of disposable and eventually you'll kind of get one that catches and then you'll you'll bank on that. If, if you really want to, you know, do the plug-in every month. But I mean, don't drop your guns for Glowstone. It's always going to be there. Just kind of maybe make push your releases to at least once a season or twice a year. Like every month, bro. And so you, you're just pretty much... You're making disposable plugins. Like, where's the innovation? Where does these ideas? What are the ideas? How can you keep pumping out new ideas for plugins all the time? You're gonna eventually gonna start to you're, you're trying to reinvent the wheel, sort of thing. I mean, no, bro, I have new ambitious ideas. It's just the develop the developers who can actually bring them to life is like zero. Like even in the audio programming Discord, I'm. I hope you're in there, but. Actually, I don't think you are. No. Because <laughs> I didn't see it on your thing. But, like, yeah, dude, the developers to work with are, like, scarce, bro. Like, there's not a lot of ambitious people out there. <clears throat> people who, like, are even just, like, cool. Like, you know how the developer community is. All a bunch of freaking pretentious people and just, like, weirdos. Like, it's it's not easy. But we're gonna freaking take over i believe in both of us like we're doing i'm really proud of what we've been doing these last this last year like i'm excited for your career i'm excited for my career i'm just really on go mode like i don't know how stressed you are about music every day but i'm happy i'm in a better mood now that i'm out of the the out of the i don't even know what to call it what you'd call computer programming lab i don't call it the whole yeah. i don't know i'll figure out a way because i don't want to call it the lab the lab is for me is for the studio right? but uh I'm, I'm a lot happier that i'm done you know for a little while and i have a baseline for uh, sweet spots but you're saying you went to the studio did you go to like a pro studio so in you know i live in la so there's like actually a lot of little recording studios and stuff yeah. this place was like it was like a smaller building. It wasn't like a huge like grocery store size. It was just like a little, I would say it's like two houses maybe or like one house property. Like it wasn't huge, but there was a bunch of rooms in there with like acoustic walls and it had like a whole drum stage, like four mics on the stage, like pretty decent awesome. room to be in. And there was like, I had the drum kit. You could rent guitars. I had like a little compressor mastering station thing with like xlr inputs in it and there was like a reverb effect on it it was like a rack basically mm -hmm. rack. that's what they're called racks yeah. Yeah. The eq and stuff we connected that to the scarlet interface you know about the scarlets right the yeah. basic interface and then connected that to my fl and then yeah i was recording live guitar straight into the daw live vocals straight into the daw super freaking fun loved it like, definitely I, like, do you know what a hit factory is no do you know what it is no no okay well hit factory after you're done in the studio they have these rooms that are pretty much just a big green screen right and you go through and you pick your song these are generally uh like mainstream songs right and then you can pick your background and then you karaoke the song in this green screen room with shit going on and that's your music video so a lot of um, artists, I think, a lot of artists use it for their music videos. Of course, they get to override, they get to override the songs that are in there and use their songs, right? But there's different hit factories, so and they're not all called hit factory. But I'm pretty sure, like, the generic uh, chain or the what is it called company? You know what are they called when there's lots of them? I don't freaking know. Yeah, like Seven Eleven or whatever the chain. Um, it's called Hit yeah. Factory. So. If you ever want a mu I mean, music video? I've seen music videos like that. When yeah. Somebody explained it. Hit Factory. Yeah. That's right. On that, you got to check out the official studio. 
Yeah, no, dude, I really freaking love making music. Like, that's what I realized was the most fun. Like, if I had to choose something forever, like, that's the thing, though. Like, I had fun because I was using Vaporwave synth because, like, you know, like, you know how you said Sweet Spots, like, you got that unique one-of-a-kind sound now. Like, that's how I felt using Vaporwave in the studio. Like, had my own plug-in, making new music. Like, it was just, like, the best freaking feeling ever. Like, that's what I wanted the whole, this past year. Like, dreams are coming true, so... Awesome. Need to go viral. That's the next step. Go viral. Work with more people and learn music theory. Fucking become an actual good artist. Like that's the number one goal for me. So definitely. Well, you're still young. You got a lot more years on me. Well, I have a lot more years on you. I'm sort of on my way out, so to speak. But I mean, I'll keep going. I'll probably turn into one of those hairy guitar players and playing on the corner or whatever. That's my destination. Is next. Um, but yeah, Bro, we, gotta, we gotta make a collab. Song you're on the up. Today. You're on the up, you're coming through, you're coming into sort of the peak, the prime. Uh, so you're like 20, like you're, you're right early. So you're supposed to hit your peak sort of thing. I don't have any experience, that's the only problem. Well, that's really the point. Know. When you're young, you, you don't have any experience. <laughs> you get that. Mm. Um, right. As far as music theory goes, what's, what's, your, what's your level there? pretty low i mean i'm barely getting into chords like the main thing is i just want to i want to have that perfect pitch or whatever people say when like you can hear a song and you're like okay this is g major you can hear notes playing and you're like oh this is c d e like i want to get that good and then i also want to just like be able to improvise on the spot like just know what chords go together know like i guess the music wheel like all those all those like ancient things like just learning the music that, wheel is called the circle of fifths it connects the keys yeah. together. As far as scales and stuff, scales, chords, scales and chords, they're the same thing. You're just playing notes in a scale when you're putting more of the notes together from a scale to make a chord. And you have to stick to that scale with the chords. So you can play any chord within the scale. So any of the notes in the scale you can put together. That's pretty much the essential bottom line of music theory. Is it when you, you know, when you like what chords go together like let's say you want to do a progression or whatever the fuck that is like there's just so it gets so deep and then also like i want to play it on the spot too that's the other thing like cooking up slowly on your own like making an edm track just like spending all day on it is different but like cooking up live like making nice sounds on your keyboard instantly and like playing guitar and like doing that instantly is like what i also want to do like just really fast like no, I make beautiful stuff. Yeah, that comes with that's muscle memory. As mm -hmm. my biggest experience bank is called sequencing, and that's just plugging into the piano roll, right? But yeah, once you get, I, I can do that fast. I also another bank of experience is the actual typing keyboard in FL Studio. I used I used it so much that I'm just like super pro at it now. I just play my letters and make music with my letters, sort of thing. Wow. And that it's part of FL Studio, right? And they have the yeah, typing the I keys, right? Time, but I never like took time to learn the notes that I'm actually. It's playing. an instrument. Well, with FL Studio now that, especially now that they have, what do you call it, key or whatever, um, you can set it. You don't need to know. You don't need to know anymore. You just right click this piano, and you got everything here. You right click again. You can be in C minor, G minor. And then your, your keys on your piano or on your keyboard, they're always the same. So it's like super cheater. Yeah. And no matter what you push, it's always going to sound good. <laughs> right? Like no matter what you push, it's always going to sound good. And that applies to synth and stuff and everything. The only other part that's missing from that is just tuning your drums to the tonic. And now that... The piano roll has locked the key. If I can get it ever to do anything. Now, it's not only for the typing the keys. It's not only for the typing piano anymore. It's also now for all pianos. So you can use your MIDI piano now. And snap to scale. Which is Dang. ridiculous. But Did you make a whole song like that? Or is it going to get boring? Well, it's up to you. You got to have technique. That's where it gets interesting. You're talking about improvising and stuff. That's where your talent comes into play. 
So generally, when you're adding flair to your compositions, they're called ornaments, musical ornaments. That's a hammer-on, pull-off, a stutter, like those notation stuff. Of course, with uh, electronic, it's different, right? Because you're playing with filters and, you know, you're doing all sorts of modulation and stuff. Mm-hmm. Huh? Glitchy effects and all this. Yeah. Stuff. You're just holding one key, but you have like a sequence running. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. It's different. When you're when you're a composer, you look to ornaments. I imagine I always hear ornaments in electronic too. So ornaments are there as well. Something to look. I think there's like sixteen ornaments, but something to look into. Yeah, I never don't know about that. Ornaments are called musical ornaments. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, that's my that's my plot. So definitely want to learn more. Just keep learning, bro. That's the number one thing. Just learn. Never Word. stop the grind. Look up XR, bro. See if you can find it. <laughs> Here's XR. I don't know if it'll show you XR. Our music, bro. No, just put in XR. Extended reality. There you go. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, dude? You want to make a VR fucking mastering plugin or something? No, it's not. It's just what I'm, I'm going to invest in. Like invest your money or mm. what? Not like as in like I'm an investor. I mean like buy some XR stuff. Oh. Yeah. Mm, it's time for XR. All right. So like a headset? Okay. I'm still sh- yeah. still shopping around though, because I can get the computer off my lap, and then live streaming is going to be weird though, because I'm going to look like a dork with this fucking headset on. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'll be playing guitar too, right? So I can have my computer right there, and I don't have to. Oh, what the heck? Yeah. You're going to be playing guitar with a VR headset on? Yeah, with XR. You don't wear you. XR. You see through. XR is like AR. AR is when you hold your phone to the emoji con to the emo- with those things that Nintendo gives you, and then you see the little 3D thing in reality. It's augmented reality. Well, extended reality, it's everything. So you're wearing a VR headset, but it's imposing on reality. So uh, there's a cup on the table, but it's digital. You reach for it, you can't grab it because it's not really there, but you see it. Uh, <laughs> so the main purpose of the XR for me is just having a really big monitor that I can look at, my computer monitor, and I don't have to have a computer hanging off my lap all the time or reaching or touching. Is Apple XR the best for that or what? What? Is Apple XR what you're going to use? Or no. Is there different- I'm using it as a proprietor. I'm still shopping around. I'm trying to find the best one. So I'm still shopping around. Seems like new. It's super excited. It's super new, super expensive. The resolution is like brutal. It's like double, double HD, full HD, both eyes. But you can see through it, right? And it looks like sunglasses. Well, some of them do. Damn. Mm-hmm. Expensive. I'm excited though. But all right, JWP. All right, man. Wrap it up. Sure. So thanks for coming through. I'm going to do the ending plug here and then you can say your piece and then I'll say my piece. So check out my website, jwpsite.com for my social links, latest news and updates and public offerings. If you'd like to help support what I do, check out my Patreon, JWP Patreon. That's with two Ps or my GoFundMe, JWP Fund. If you're watching this on YouTube, a like, follow, or subscribe or appreciate it. And thanks to Zane for coming through at artentity.com. Or at, 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 sorry, at Art Entity YouTube. YouTube.com at Art Entity. I totally botched that. But if you want to say your piece? Yeah, I mean, JWP and I were taking over the fucking world <laughs> and we got some good stuff coming. I'm just really excited. Hit us up if you want to collab or just have any whatever, want to talk about our music stuff. And yeah, chase your dreams no matter what. We will see you soon. Goodbye. All right, peace out, everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm.